the walls of time are breaking down. You need to listen. The only way to save the universe. Watch Type 40. And here we are again. This can't be right, can it? <laughs> yes, it is. It's time for Type 40 Live, materialising here again with the live stream Doctor Who magazine show across your view screen in real time on YouTube, Rumble, and on Facebook too. There, uh, always in front of a live chat full of friends, fans, and companions just like you. <sighs> Lots to get into. I think things are waking up, everybody. I think things are waking up. Ha! Ah, I'm Dan Hadley, Birmingham's King of the Geeks. And yes, we're right back to right now. In fact, in all things Doctor Who, lots to get stuck into to pick our way at and spill the tea, take the pee. Yes, enough is enough, everybody. Stay tuned and uh, please remember if you're watching on facebook in the type 40 facebook group hit the little blue link and then facebook tell Streamyard who you are Streamyard tells us we all get on first name terms to huddle down and take it all in to yeah catch a whiff of what's going on in the universe uh, just in the last few hours been there's been a couple of breaking stories too lots and lots of intrigue okay this is doctor who's 61st year 15 incarnations of the Time Lord. We're waiting, aren't we, with bated breath and clenched buttocks for some brand new episodes in just a couple of months' time with, with this fella, if he can keep his trousers on for long enough, of course. But before then, there's always plenty to talk about and and to laugh, to laugh about too. Okay, yes, so we're up the other end of the vortex this time. The other day we were here, weren't we, talking about, uh, about the first Doctor's era, and that was fantastic. Thank you so much for all the support, all the likes and all the shares, all the comments. Very exciting time to, to be a Doctor Who fan, and the excitement keeps on coming as we fill in, fill up and fill in the console room. <laughs> this time, yeah, it's playtime, I thought. Yeah, so I thought we'd, we'd have a roam around, have a roam around in this and, and check how screen accurate this playset may be. Now, I'm not exactly sure, but I know a woman who is, she's a bit of an expert when it comes to the Matt Smith era. What do you think about this playset, Charlotte? I think the console's pretty good. I think the walls were more orange and they were like, mm -hmm. it was a slightly different actual sort of look to the walls, but the console, especially the little. I know Ian hated it, but I love the the odd sort of <laughs> bits and bobs because I think it just matched it, it matched Matt sort of except sort of eccentricness, and it suited his yeah. doctor. So I thought him having odd things on was stuck on suited him. So you could be right. Could, I think it, I think it was a little more orange. Maybe this one was left out in exposed to sunlight. <laughs> maybe near <laughs> near to an open curtain. Maybe for a bit too long. Yeah, it was left near a window, and then it just doesn't got to it for a little bit. <laughs> but I do, I do think it's rather lovely. The, the chair looks a little toilet-esque, but, you know, hey, you can't have everything, can you? At yeah, least he had a chair. <laughs> this is true they don't all get one do they uh, some of them have to lean against jukeboxes and things like that yes ian's not very very keen on this one 
as as we know. Now, the Daleks may have a master plan. We have a mega plan here. Yes, he's back after a couple, <laughs> a couple of episodes away. Ian David Diaz, the mega geek, back on Type 40 Live. Hello, mate. Hello, everybody. Um, yeah, carpet stuck on the console is not a very good look. Come on, let's face it, Charlotte. It wasn't carpet. I said it was the old bloody carpet, Charlotte. It was freaking carpet. What the hell? What? This console sucks big time. Anyway, carry Where's on. the carpet? That in in not not in that obviously or that model, but oh. when you when you look at the in the real the real deal, they got carpet on it. I can't believe it. They've got crap all over it. Anyway, such is life. Look again. <laughs> You'll see it. Look again. Yeah, yeah the, the full set is rather tall. Look, it's taller than you think. They've gone to the trouble of putting the. Well, they've uh, got the, the layers that Matt had, which is quite nice. Because I always love that that like, he went underneath in his some of his stories and you could see the proper like three layers almost of the TARDIS. Is yeah. this um is this uh, a toy for sale? It was available at the time. I mean I've never oh, right. owned I've never owned one of these. But I wonder has a starry eyed girl Sarah Graham have you ever seen one of these Sarah have you ever had one? I have seen it. Uh, no I never had one. I had the Lego one. Um, but it wasn't quite as impressive. Stop laughing! No. <laughs> 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 Who am I to talk? <laughs> this one's rather statuesque, yeah. isn't it, Sarah? It is, and it, again, like um, Charlotte was saying, I, I love the different levels. Um, of yeah, stupidness, <laughs> of crappiness, right. the different levels. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Sorry, I was on. wondering because that we've got the little ladder there that goes down to a blue area, and I did wonder if that was some sort of jacuzzi, Charlotte. Well, maybe <laughs> is the swimming pool the, the library is just further back? Could be, yeah, could be. Uh, no, I have to admit, it, I, I, I like aspects of it, it was just too cluttered, too to orange. Me. Um, and I, yeah, I, I did like how we collected junk, I thought that worked really well, but yeah, it was just too, there was too much. In it, I mean, it did. I guess it's it did. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Reflect Matt Stocks. That's the word I want because he was that's chaotic, chance, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I much preferred it uh, when it returned in the snowman, yeah. Mm. I like the little swing that we sometimes saw him sit on mm. there. I think that's a really, really nice touch. But no, I've never seen one of these, never owned one. It's one of the few Doctor Who sort of big toys that I've never owned. And I think as time goes on, I'm getting more and more fond of this entire era. So yeah, maybe I'll have to keep a lookout for one of these at a car boot sale. The car boot season soon again, Ian. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I don't have a car, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't think it's compulsory. I think you can just sort of walk. <laughs> Nor do I have any boots, so there you go. <laughs> ah, they're fantastic. So it's good to have you all back. Anyway, we may are we joined by anybody else? Yes, we are. I'm happy to say, yes, we've we've managed to uh, to grab him. We've grabbed him with one of those obelisks like they had in the Five Doctors, because it is a different time zone where he is. He's our real time traveler and up with a lark where he is where he is it's uh oh it's not matt this time it's it's matthew we're joined by matthew pot uh, uh, <laughs> i am imagine yeah. if that no. pyramid came to get you while you're on the toilet right. that would be inconvenient <laughs> wouldn't it wake up in the death Ooh, zone uh, yeah with your pants down around your ankles yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's gonna like, be hot. What are you doing? We're just uh, let's let's yeah. start as we mean to go off. We're, we're not even yeah. ten minutes in, chat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt, are you? I'm gonna be careful. How I, how I, how I ask you this? Are you fond of a playset? Do you, what do you think of this? <laughs> <laughs> I am actually. I have the Lego one of uh, <laughs> of yeah, this. Sure, yeah. Yay! So yeah, <laughs> it's very expensive now. So I'm mm, guessing this really. is very expensive too. It looks like a bit of a like a cake. I feel like I want to eat it for some reason. It was like one of those cakes cake. that they have, you know. Yeah, like Somebody a bake off. Have made a cake yeah, of yeah. Yeah. Charlotte. Yeah, on the bake off. Yeah, I'd say I'd say you could probably make make that out of cake. You seem to be able to make anything out of cake nowadays. Give them ideas. Let us know there in the live chat in the comments. Would you yeah. ever make this out of cake? I was yeah, it looks like it's made. It looks like yes, it's made out of marzipan. It does actually. Yeah. I think it's the yellow, isn't it? Yeah, it is, it it is the yellow. Yeah. Uh, I once made the pandorica. Uh, a cake. It was, you know, that Doctor Who cookbook. 
Yeah. You made you made it like a cute, a grey cube, and I got the stencil through the market, and then you cut it inside, and it was one of those smash cakes, and it was full of M and M's and sweets, <laughs> and very very bad. But yeah. Fair enough. They're the best ones. When when you know when you're eating it, I'm going to regret this. <laughs> like... Fun and games, fun and games. Talking of which, I thought of you a lot when I heard this this week. So there was a rumor. I don't know who started this. So there was a mental rumor because Celebrity Big Brother is underway oh, yeah. again. Yeah. It's on ITV2 this time. So it keeps moving channels, don't they? Every time that they sort of reinvent it. And a house chock full of next to nobodies that I've never heard of have packed the place out. And as usual, they're going to get picked off, aren't they, by the great viewing public. Now, somebody out in the Doctor Who community put it out there that one of the people that was due to go into the house was, uh, the, <laughs> was the ninth Doctor himself, Christopher Eccleston. Now... A lot of Doctor Who fans really bought into this. I can't imagine why they thought he would even consider it. Surprise, surprise, when the uh, when the cast of, of Celebrity Big Brother 2024 was revealed, the ninth Doctor, he he wasn't there after all, Charlotte. Were you were you disappointed in this? Did you, did you no, about? but it would have been so lovely, wouldn't it? I can just imagine <laughs> Eccleston being sat, being like absolutely fed up with half the people in there. Like, being like, what are you famous for? I was on Towie for five minutes. I can just picture him, yeah. like, just absolutely having a field day with the so-called celebrities around him. Do you think he'd quit that faster than he quit Doctor Who, Ian? God, yeah. I mean, thing is, though, he'd never he'd never participate in things like <laughs> no, this. I mean, no. mind you, though, he did participate in, uh, you know, um, uh, in that stupid show. Was that show with Jodie Foster, the detective one? Oh, he was in that, detective. wasn't he? Yeah, he was in yeah. that. And he shagged her as well. Good God. <laughs> Doctor Who shagged her. Jodie Foster. There you go. There you go. In the show, of course. In the show. Not, not, not in real life. I doubt very much you'd do it in real life. <laughs> <laughs> so, you think, <laughs> yeah. so you think it may have been actually one of one of these that, that uh, Chris dished out? Yeah, Chris will yeah. never do something like this. He's, 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 he's got scruples, isn't he? You know, he'll yeah, he never do yeah. it. He'll never do it. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. If they're going to pay people, you know, mm. half a million pounds, was it, to... To be in there, I, I don't know. I think you know money talks now, especially with well, they you did. Know, he's had to he's had to go down a little bit to you know. To Apparently, make some money they lately, did so. offer him. They did offer him a lot of money to come and do the fiftieth, uh, didn't they? And he he still mm -hmm. refused. So there you go. You know. Sorry, right, he's got big finish money, money at the moment. He's fine. Ex people. Absolutely, yeah, and, conven <laughs> and convention money. So absolutely. yeah, I think he's all right. <laughs> You say that it, it wouldn't be befitting of a Time Lord to go into the celebrity Big Brother house right. there, oh, Matt. Oh, no. But, I know what this uh, is coming. I know yeah, where this is well, going. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I was really surprised to see the 12th Doctor there, after all, reunited with uh, Missy as well. That, oh. That <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear God. So that's, that's gone. <laughs> Yeah. That's gone on. So yeah, they've they've uh, yeah, I think time has been kind. It's been it's been a few years now, it's been ten years or so. So that's what they used to look like. Uh, and there they were. Do you know what we should do? I would years. watch a big brother if it was hmm. all the doctors in one house. I don't think they'd do it somehow. <laughs> I don't I don't uh, think they'd do it. Unless think? it's unless it's for um, you know, for a red nose day or something like yeah. that, they'd probably do it, but nah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm sure that the it, have they got name they... tags on? Probably. We <laughs> have <laughs> 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 they're real celebrities, aren't they? People know who they are. <laughs> yeah, you, you all know me. I'm the yeah, I, I don't know. I don't I don't watch it. Do they have name name tags on Celebrity Big name, Brother? Name tags Instagram on, the, on, the, on that on that photo that you had. I think on the old when they go in, they have name tags. Oh, they is do. it? Oh, course, okay. Uh, uh, these two Get have worked to together before. I can't remember their names, but they. they <laughs> so, but yeah. are they are they inside the house then, Dan? It looks like it. Oh bloody hell! Why did I need the money that badly? It looks like it. That's Sharon oh, wow. Osborne, of course, and yeah. Louis Walsh um, cosplaying as the as the twelfth Doctor and <laughs> and Missy on Celebrity Big Brother. So yeah, go and go and watch that by all means because I can't be uh, I can't be bothered basically. So, <laughs> uh, yes, so um, that's going on. But so is this. So today, this has been revealed as well uh, from Doctor to Creator David Tennant's just been revealed oh. as the new host of this uh, expensive new game show for ITV called Genius Game. Uh, it's a, a reality-based game shave. show. He needs to shave. <laughs> well, he this does. is one of his many looks, isn't it, Ian? I think he's going for the designer yeah. look. You're just yeah. jealous because you can't grow a moustache. 
<laughs> you know what? You're probably right. <laughs> You're probably yeah, right. I, <laughs> I was talking about this. Why is everything on our TV presented by Bradley Walsh or David Tennant? Is there only like two people? Bradley Walsh, now? David Tennant, Ryan and Clark, and Alison Hammond. If the four of them ever, were ever uh, on the same tour bus and something unfortunate happened, British television would be screwed. But the, the and, premise and of this, David Lamb really... um, narrating, I guess. <laughs> David, David, Lamb. Lamb. David Lamb, you know, the guy who does the voice on um, uh, Come Down Me. Oh, I don't know who that me. is. He, he, oh, the, the guy who does the voice you... in Come Down Me, yeah, he does loads and loads of videos, doesn't he? <laughs> uh, yeah. So the premise of this one, Ian, just attempt you, I know you like a game show, it says the players will attempt to navigate each uniquely crafted challenge, but who has what it takes to deceive, collude and outsmart their opponents? Let the game... Wait a moment, that... what's on those walls? Let... Yeah, it's yeah. a target. <laughs> they look like Randalls. They yeah. Randalls. <laughs> and it's got split wow. level as well, like Matt Smith's yeah. title. So it's a bit right of an upgrade. Right <laughs> That's got to be deliberate, hasn't it? That's got to be. be. That's got to That's be. Set, yeah. That's set, yeah. Definitely that yeah. set. <laughs> He's even got the hexagonal console there in the middle. It's got no, no controls. No. <laughs> there. I mean, this obviously this strikes me as a, as a cross between the Crystal Maze, the old game show with Richard O'Brien, yeah. and the that's idea great. that it's all mind games. That's mm. clearly ITV's attempt to do uh, the Traitors, the big I, uh, the big mm. BBC show. That yeah. um, what's her name does the woman who looks like she needs a wash. What's her name? Oh, Claudia, Claudia Winkleman. Yeah, yeah, she's another one. The Walking Fringe. Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> uh, that's uh, yeah. So, is this the kind of thing? I mean, David Tennant's on it on everything in the UK at the moment, Matt. How much of it makes its way to you? Most of absolutely. Little... Well, actually, no. Some of it does. Um, I saw a game sh- that we've got a game show here at the moment with Warwick Davis in it, which is weird. Oh but, yeah, he um, does something as well. Uh, yeah. So you know, they do make it over here. We got the Chaser over here too, mm-hmm. the UK version. Mm-hmm. Before they made, we, they made our own version. Um, so yeah, no, I mean, some of them do make him over, but um, yeah, I don't know, I wouldn't watch it. I'd put him in gladiators, to be honest. <laughs> watch, watch him get a great big twat in by somebody, yeah, the- <laughs> yeah, it's like he, he, this is for the 60th anniversary, <laughs> <laughs> got a pugil stick around his head. So, yeah, who's in Who's in for this then? A genius game, is this your bag, Charlotte? Would you watch something like that? To be honest, like I feel like with game shows, every one that comes across is trying too hard to be different now, because all the formats have been done so that they have to be the new shiny, interesting one. Mm-hmm. Like I said, Tenant's usually good at presenting, but even I'm starting to get like burnout now. I was literally joking with my family because it's Comic Relief on Friday. They were like, "Who's going to present it?" I said, "Well, Tenant will be there." Because it's comic relief. Yeah, and it's yeah. just, he's, like you said, he's too... I think, honestly, he would benefit having a couple of years of doing oh. very select projects. Mm-hmm. So you don't feel like you're just constantly seeing him on telly at the moment. Perhaps he needs the money. Who knows, you know? I'd be surprised, because he's always been working How many kids has he got? He's probably got another one on the way. Yeah, he's like that bloke <laughs> out of The Sound of Music who's got, like, 12. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's getting that way. Yeah, we are just a few weeks on, remember, from uh, David Tennant. He took a really rare L when he was hosting the BAFTA Film Awards. It was a complete car crash, because he was trying stand-up comedy and improvisation and all sorts of things. And and he was he was a standing joke for a good 48 hours but the british public they love this guy so much it seems that we have got pretty short memories when it comes to when it comes to david Tennant. so i think we're probably going to forgive him that but uh, speaking of baftas yes we've had the bafta film awards that was a couple of weeks ago they've just announced today that the the bafta television awards that's happening in a couple of months time why they have two separate awards ian heaven only knows but along with this, we have nominations now for for this particular award. It's called the Memorable Moment category. <laughs> and this is the only category that's decided by uh, by a public vote. So yeah. the public haven't come up with the with the nominations, but the public get to side get to decide which is going to get the prize, which is going to scoop the gong. And Doctor Who is in there, believe it or not. It's this moment, uh, the scene where Shooty Gatwa first appeared, the notorious by regeneration. So this moment uh, didn't just divide uh, the, the Doctor, it divided the fan base. I think more fans dislike it than like it, though. It's, uh, I'd, I'd still call it divisive. 
wouldn't you? So yeah, this is up there for memorable moment award at the TV BAFTAs. What do you make of that one, Sarah? <laughs> I knew you were going to ask me first. Uh, well, I won't be voting for it. Uh, <laughs> well, it, it was memorable. Um, it was, yeah. You can't say that. Probably, they... um, I, I didn't mind the idea in principle, but the, the execution, it, it just looks so silly. Um, is it, what, I mean, what else? What else is up? Well, this, this is the thing, isn't it? Because memorable moment, it's it's um obviously how you how you respond to each episode of Doctor Who is kind of subjective. But you do wonder if this is in there, what else is in there? So we've got uh, a moment, uh, a moment in uh, Happy Valley, which is a big drama, probably just as big, probably bigger than Doctor Who, actually, where uh, two two characters had a showdown in the kitchen. That sounds very. Oh, I remember that. Actually, no, that was a good one. I watched Happy Valley. Okay. Oh, that was actually um, quite that's good. Isn't it? Well, basically, it was the baddie, sort of the villain that's been the villain for the last two series, I can't remember how many series they've done of it, basically finally faced off against the policewoman who's been trying to catch him. Okay. Gotcha. And he, he actually did something than it quite... Sounds, then. <laughs> he did something... And also, it's what he did to himself. That's all I'll say. He did Do something you make that a cup of like, tea? <laughs> no, it was a bit more... Show. A bit more than it doesn't sound doesn't sound too sound too high stakes. There's uh, something from the Sky Atlantic drama Succession. A moment there where a character died. There is uh, a scene from a Channel Four series called The Piano, where a 13 year old uh, stuns commuters with a jaw dropping piano performance scene. So oh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Everybody loves it when like little kids play music and brilliantly, don't they? So I, you can sort of see why that would. Um, what, uh, the question you got to ask yourself is, who decided on these clips? Uh, that's what I was thinking. So, who decided on these clips? And if it BAFTA. was the if it was BAFTA the establishment, then it's all bollocks. Basically, that's what it is. There's no way the audience would vote for this stupidness. Yeah, BAFTA have decided on uh, on the shortlist. Well, there you go. You see, public get rigged to already. Who, yeah. Get to decide who wins it. Yeah, they all seem very kind of worthy, very, very yeah. worthy moments. I, I don't think, I think if you ask the average person in the street yeah. about a memorable TV moment from the year, it would probably, probably be something like somebody getting a hat trick in the football or yeah. somebody winning in yeah. a dart yeah. match yeah. or or some something going wrong on yeah. the chase. I don't think it would be moments like this no. uh, or this. So the other one is uh, David teasing Victoria Beckham about her working class this it. stinks. This stinks <laughs> of of uh, well, of rubbish. It really does. You know, yeah. I think probably. I mean, Happy Valley. I mean, I've never watched it, but I do know of it. Same with Succession. These were really popular programs across the board, and they're not just like genre things like Doctor Who. Yeah. A lot of people. What that's more like the public's more likely to have watched them too, sadly than Doctor Who specials. Yeah. Nobody's and, mentioned and any of they, this to me, Charlotte. They, well, here's the thing about like Happy Valley. That was a proper drama with two really good actors. And like I said, I would if I had to pick, I'd go for Happy Valley because if that was really good acting, those two, in that moment. Really, it was a nice build-up to it. You watched and it? Like, yeah, no, I, yeah, I watched it. Mm -hmm. And what like I said, I don't know if it's spoilers if I spoil it, but basically what the villain did, he didn't just like quietly go. He actually went out in a... He set himself alight. In a blaze of glory. That's what happened in that moment. Yeah. So it was like, wow, so, didn't expect well, that. Well, didn't have a cup of tea then, or a no. slice of cake. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, there is another one in this up for this award as well. It's the the episode of The Last of Us, Matt, uh, which was the what it, an American show? I thought it was all yeah, British. Yeah, uh, that's what you would think. But it's an episode wow. of The Last of Us that revolved around the two the two gay characters, Bill and Frank. Oh. So you've got that you've got doctor who you've got succession you've got all these dramas and uh, i it's think the fix. doctor who yeah i think the doctor who stands probably about as much of a chance as anything else i think they they seem very very slim pickings to me uh, i i've heard good things about happy valley i watched that episode of the last of us i thought it was great for what it was but really this doesn't seem like it denotes 2023 as a particularly strong tv year you know if you why want to vote, any of okay. these that members of the public can vote for them and you can go over to www.bafta.org slash moment and uh, vote for what well, vote for doctor who we're a doctor who show we've got to say go and vote for doctor who but if you wanted to vote for one of the other ones obviously that's up to you <laughs> can i just say 
can I Don't... can I use some British vocabulary? Go on, Ed. Yes. Very naff. <laughs> <laughs> they have the naffest. <laughs> it's, it's absolute nonsense. You know, one of the shows the that was watched the most, right, um, last year um, was Night Agent. Right, you guys probably never heard of it. It was on Netflix. That yeah, that show was watched. That would got the huge, huge ratings. That should be in there. If 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 they're they're taking the you know, Last of Us, which is an American show, why isn't Night Agent in there? Because that was watched by millions upon millions of million people watch that show. So, you know, it, it's, well, it's a you, fix. It's a fix. All of this is just crap, basically. It's just it, it does seem a bit like a, a confection. It all seems very cherry picked to me, yeah, Ian. Absolutely. The kind of things that they'd like to think that people had latched onto, rather than the genuine TV moments of the year, the stuff that made somebody laugh on Goggle on Gogglebox, for example, Sarah, mm. or some old lady winning the Bake Off. You know, that's the kind of stuff that people. I can imagine the thirteen-year-old girl people probably talking about that. But yeah. the rest of it, I think, you either watch those shows or you don't. Mm. And yeah, it's typical sort of elitist box also also right so if you think the nominations is a fix basically that they 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 decide on it what about the votes they could fix that too so they that's what i'm saying so the whole do. thing is just corrupt right to its core it really it's just is narcissism is all yeah. it is a it voting is. a voting does close on tuesday the 9th Who of cares? april <laughs> and uh, the winner will be announced on sunday the 12th of may at the at the BAFTA TV Awards, if anybody cares about any of that, probably on the BBC, I would I would imagine. Okay, With so Claudia Winkleman come out, come and on the, naked. And, and no, how about, <laughs> how about and the winner for best web series is. We know some of these shows that we've been slagging off. They could be the yeah. best things ever. We've been missing these fantastic dramas. Yeah. I think the best way that we have of finding out is to go and see what they're talking about in the live chat there on YouTube okay. or on Facebook. See yeah, what they've got to say about yeah. it all. Make sure you watch Type Forty, or the universe will crash on you. What are they oh, saying? No. You know. Dennis, let's see what they've got yeah. to say. Uh, we have, hi everyone from Lord Thoth. Hi Dan from Lord Thoth as well. Hello everyone yeah. from you, yeah. Charlotte. Hello, everyone. Charlotte. <laughs> Trimply in the room with his customary oh, boy, shitmate. Hi T40ers from Ducks. That's but just hi, Doug. rude. <laughs> T40 I was T40-ing like a... last night, but I'm not saying anything. <laughs> it sounds like a criminal offence, doesn't it, Matt? And, and we've got Peter yeah. Harrington here too. Anything can happen in the next three hours. Can it stand, 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 yeah. by, stand by for action. Greetings, fellow Who fans, says Rob yeah, Alexander. Good to have you back, Rob, and thank you for all the comments on the last show there when we, we talked about the reconstruction of Dalek Master Plan, episode one. Good evening, one and Hi, all. Garbage. Says garbage. Could have you back as well. Uh, lots of hails and hellos and highs. Mm -hmm. A good evening, Who family from Mark Milford. Oh, I know. Is he ever going to get off that toilet? That's the question. Is it? <laughs> yeah, keep keep drinking, keep drinking the food, mate. We're we're rooting for you. We're rooting for you, Mark. Uh, heretics in all the way from Sonny Dudley with a good evening, all. And just, this is something about football. So it makes no sense Not to, to me. me. To me, whatsoever. But I'm glad you're enjoying it. Whatever it is that you're, whatever it is that you're doing there. Who else is here? Who else is here? Give me, a, give me a moment. Uh, CTC's back in in a couple of weeks. Nice in Hello. Good 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 evening, people. Good evening. We have, um, we have the happy werewolf in as well. The happy werewolf. <laughs> I don't yeah. I have a terrible feeling. Ruby is going to be the. Doctor Who was left at the portal gate in the <laughs> end, endless child or whatever. Oh, I, I, werewolf, I've got no idea what you're talking about. But <laughs> da, 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 adds, I, da, da, keep, yeah, I think uh, the pubs have obviously opened early where the happy werewolf is. Uh, uh, popcorn, says Rob. I, uh, I don't know. I uh, help yourself. Help yourself by all means. And we have uh, we have the sense fear as well. Good uh, hello everyone on this night when the Doctor Who news is starting to creep out. Hello. It is, it is. Matthew Butterfield's in two. Thank heaven for that. Hello. As is Jamie Reese. Hello all. So it's Jamie. Hello. Richard Brooks is here as well. I'm and who Richard. else? Yeah, they're gradually lining up. We're catching up. We're catching up ever so slowly, but we are catching up. We're catching up in time to see Rose. Hello to everyone. Hello, Rose. Who's going to be Hi, listening Rose. tonight. <laughs> Doesn't explain why. Yes, uh, it's 
I won't take it personally, Rose. Just enjoy. However you enjoy Type 40 Live, it's fine. It's all fine by us. Absolutely. T-Dwarf Productions is here. That's our friend Tom who says, Hi, everyone. I am making a fish person from the underwater menace. Fantastic. Hello, Tom. I wish I was. I wish I was making a fish person. (laughs) It's pretty awesome. We need to see pictures of this, don't we? Uh, The uh, Punch it. So he keeps telling me to do this, but every time I do, so it hurts. It hurts. <laughs> He's talking about that, isn't he? Light, yeah, I light up the candle. Yeah. Darren M, whatever yeah, that is. And, e, and uh, Evening All from Woodhouse 1, hello, two, Woodhouse. Two. Hello, hello. Yay from YW, Charlotte. Yay, uh, yay, yay, yay. Hello, YW. Um, <laughs> it's hello, easy to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Elizabeth Knight Bridge is also in. It says, yeah. Bonjour, Dr. I can barely speak English, Elizabeth. <laughs> Bonjour, Hello. Elizabeth. <laughs> Hello, Doctor Who fans, says Elizabeth. Hello, Elizabeth. Good to have you back. Been a little while. Uh, Daryl Joyce is also with us as well. Fantastic Hi, Darryl. artist. Daryl. Artist and Doctor Who pundit, I think. <laughs> uh, Gary D's in too. Good evening, everyone. Looking forward to this podcast. Well... Glad, glad you're here, Gary. We aim to please. We aim to please. Uh, Archer Collins in as well, waiting with bated breath. Well, I, I do hope you have uh, breathed out finally, depending on when you <laughs> when you I think it could have been a while Hello, ago. Yes. <laughs> Keep those comments coming, everybody. Ian's back, yeah. says Retro Doc yeah. Gary, because they've noticed, they've spotted you in. Hi, Gary. It, it's, it's why it's why Shooty's dressed up tonight, just because Ian's here, just to, be, <laughs> just to make Ian happy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. <sighs> uh, yeah, we have uh, put chit chit. No, no, oh, people are just trying to make me fumble my words. I can't even. I'm not going to attempt to read that, Richard. How do? Now, this is a bit more like you. I can pronounce yeah. that. How do, Sir Simon oh, Anthony? Nice, how do? do? Well, it's nice to have a how do. You don't get that very often now. It's from my way. You do? Hey, Rose. I insist on this. We've got Corvin as well. I can see Corvin. Yes, there he is. Gotcha, Corvin. Hello, hello all. Hello, Corvin. Hello to On Comics. That's Lonnie Hi, from On Comics. Hi, Lonnie. I think, isn't it good to have you back as well, Lonnie? Yeah, great stuff. Uh, keep it all coming, everybody. Get commenting on all of this. Uh, are you going to be watching David Tennant there on his new game show? Or are you pretty much full to the brim of, of Tennant? Oh, <laughs> God. What? Just yeah, let's move on. Are we, I mean, yeah, are we going to talk about the great, uh, what is it, the Great British Bake Off thing? No, we're not. Not this time. No. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> no, we're not. Not this time. So let's Good talk idea. About the genius game about Chris Eccleston not being in Celebrity Big Brother after all. Do you think they'll get him one day? And uh, yeah, if you, none of that is to your taste. What is it that you're watching? We need to know these things here at Type 40 Live. Uh, yeah, yeah, we've got, we've got more, more people. So we've got some late arrivals there. So, yeah, oh, for, fall to the brim, says Vanessa. <laughs> no, Vanessa. Um, I won't ask, but good to have you. <laughs> the return, yes, the return of Vanessa Law. Hey, Always Vanessa. happy to see. Yes, so keep all that coming. There's a lot more to get into. Uh, some uh, Some good stories, some weird stories. And some foregone conclusions, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, where should we go next? Yes. Oh, let's yeah, him. Welcome to Type 40. Where? Where shall we start? <laughs> <laughs> Matt's got a friend. Matt's got a friend. Well, I, I thought since Simon's not here in Lenny, so... <laughs> yeah, good, good, good stuff. He's, I, I he's, he's a bit grumpy. Good. He is. It's, it's too early in the morning for him. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I'm afraid to say, my friend, that uh, he may he may not be cheered up too much by by this news. So where where are we? Yes. So it's been a couple of months of speculation about the status of one of Doctor Who's cast members. But multiple sources now have confirmed to us that Type 40 Millie Gibson was indeed sacked, just (gasps) as the Mirror claimed. Um, She'd been announced as playing Ruby, if you remember, on Children in Need Night back in 2022. So not that long ago at all. And we've had just one episode of her in character, on screen, no time at all to get used to. The The reports came pretty soon after that episode broadcast. And yeah, we have had confirmation now. Those rumours are true. Millie Gibson has been let go 
from her full-time position as Doctor Who companion. Charlotte, any surprises? Not surprised because of the silence. That We all said this. If there was a plan, if it was of, for me, I thought if it was of her own accord as well, there would have been something said to basically shut us all up from spe- from doing this, talking about it, and they could just carry on as like, right, we've got a new companion, let's get excited for her. Do we know I what am, she was sacked I'm intrigued for? why, yes, if, yeah. if we've managed to get any more than just she's been sacked. Mm. Uh, my uh, sources say it was uh, not so much the quality of her work as her conduct uh, being allegedly late for filming, uh, problems with night shoots, all those rumours that we saw basically in the newspapers, all of it, all of it was mm. true. It was more about her conduct than her actual work. W- what are your thoughts, Ian? Um, I think she's dodged a bullet, tell you the truth. I mean, this, this version <laughs> of the Doctor Who is... This Doctor Who version of Doctor Who is absolute bollocks. So it's I no, think but she's... Ian, that's that's your opinion, though, isn't it? This role could yeah, potentially yeah. expose her to a global audience. Surely that would. No, be I hope thing. I hope she moves on to better things. That's that's all I'm saying. Mm. I, I think I don't think Doctor Who's going to take her anywhere personally, but um, I think she's dodged a bullet and she's. I think she's better off. She's got a bad attitude, it seems, according to all the rumors. Um, I hope she calms down with that because she's she's a very good actress i've seen her a couple of episodes of coronation street so i hope she uh you know moves on to something better that's all i can say mm. Mm. how about you how about you sarah are you surprised by this no again we, with our our things have been that the fact that there was no comment whatsoever as charlotte was saying no statement um it all, all seemed a bit fishy um yeah I, I do feel a bit sorry for that you know the relentless you know, tabloids, but it looks like she's only got herself to blame. Um, very sad, but she's young. It's a learning experience. Let's That's right. Learn from it. Um, she's mm. got her entire career ahead of her. Um, but yeah, it's a shame, you know, especially if she turns out to be a brilliant companion. Um, is she, is she that, is she, um, her tenure shorter than, um, What's that woman's name in it? The, 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 the companion, Matt, not Max, the companion that's with uh, Pocoldi. Oh, Bill. 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 Yeah. She, her, her tenure is shorter than Bill's, is it? Yeah. Bill had. Yeah. Certainly in screen time. Oh, Bill wow. had 13 cool. episodes. Nice. Yeah, the first yeah, and the Christmas even, special. Yeah, even mm. if Millie does have an episode or two in her, in the second series of Shooty, that still yeah. will be less than Bill. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's, that's crazy. Huh. They will have probably exercised some sort of option on her to wrap mm. things up in the second yeah. season. I would imagine that when the truth comes out about this, there's been quite a lot of fudging that's been go- uh, that's been gone on to make this work because the character is set to appear in the following season too. So you know, sacked. You know, again, it's a it's a dramatic word. But clearly, something dramatic has been done. She's only 19 years old, Matt. This should have been the role of a lifetime. The, a role in Doctor Who has made stars out of Karen Gillan, for example. Jenna Coleman. Okay, Jenna Coleman's not joined the MCU, but she's led many dramas in the last few years. Uh, what could be next for Millie Gibson? I don't know. But we've had weeks and weeks of these sort of rumours. We covered this last about three weeks ago. You know, And within, I'll be honest, I mean, this information came to me within a day of us last talking about it, but I just didn't want to go in on it again that quickly. I mean, what do you think? Was Is this pretty much what you expected? Um, well, I hope she gets a chance to expose herself somewhere else. Um, expose herself? Yeah, you got <laughs> <laughs> um, Because anyway. honestly... She was probably the best bit in Doctor in 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 this latest yeah, iteration, as far as I'm concerned. Like yeah. she's she very strong, part, wasn't she? She took her part seriously. Mm. I feel, mm. um, and I yeah, I was like everybody else, just shocked that she'd been she she departed the way she's gone. And and the thing is, like, I can see now that they're not going to take any prisoners. For some reason, they're not, but they're not going to get rid of the main person, are they? That's the problem. See, I think, I think she, because she was so replaceable, um, that's what they've done. So, you know, obviously, you know, it's been an opportunity that they've taken. And, um, Matt, what do you think about Vanessa's comment here, who says her career is over if she's been pinned as difficult? Could, could a tag like that taint her career? I've 
look, I mean, I'm not like Ian. I've never worked with actors, so I don't know what they're really, really like behind the scenes. Mm. But as a professional, like as a as a like in front of the camera, she was perfect. Mm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know I, what? I just felt I just felt she was the only casting they ever got right on that show, on the current iteration. <laughs> like There's... that was the only one that I was excited about. That's mm -hmm. that's Doug, got on. Dog truth. Sims agrees with you, Matt. Pity about <laughs> Millie. Ruby was the one character I liked. Ian. They're just saying that there's two sides to the story, right? So yeah. what we're hearing from the from the mirror or your rumors, Dan, that's one side. But her side, you know, that's yet to be uh, exposed, obviously. So, you know. We can't really comment. I yeah, I mean, there could, there could be a million. There, obviously, the truth probably lies somewhere in the middle. Uh, yeah. But again, if you think she was a child actress, filming Coronation Street is very different mm. from filming Doctor Who. Yeah. Doctor Who is not safe. It's chaotic. To me, it sounds like Russell and the team have learnt nothing from 20 years ago. To me, it sounds as bad and as, you know, messed you up. I wonder. As you know, they have Chris learned a lot Chris, since then. Chris, Chris and Billy have said, you know, mm. from way back then, and you're like, is this just a bit of history repeating itself? Except maybe it's worse because you know, there's more fingers in the pies now. Russell can't just do yeah. what he wants, yeah. you know, he's answerable to other people. Again, just um, to just to make it clear, we've got another comment here. She's filming the season two finale. That well, they're nowhere near film, filming the season two finale yet. Electric Ball. She her couldn't have been fired. Now, what I'm saying is that she was she's been sacked as the full time companion on Doctor Who. Yes, so that original agreement for her to be the co lead of this show is no longer in place. That doesn't mean that they couldn't have negotiated with her agent for further episodes, a renegotiation to wrap up storylines or whatever else to dial back that commitment and involvement in the show to tidy it up for her, for the series, sorry, and to maybe depart the show completely with a little with a little dignity that's going to keep mm. some of the overrunning some of the long-running sorry story arcs keep those intact it's about damage limitation when a, when a second lead like this leaves a show like doctor who at, a, at this at this crucial time but chris eccleston had this uh, uh, when he speaks about it he was saying that it was disorganized when they were doing it and stuff like that yeah, and he did, didn't yeah. like the way it was treated and stuff like that it might have been the same thing with, with with millie as well who knows as i said there's two sides to the story it's always two sides you know that the side yeah. that we're hearing now is is i i guess one side we need to hear her side i guess so i'm pretty sure that she's going to be interviewed in some magazine and then she's going to give her side, you know. So yeah. Well, what gets me is the fact that she's she's been sacked, but there's no there's no actual reason for it actually said in the thing. It's just like oh, she was sacked. Well, the, they um, again. Let me make it clear. The BBC have still said nothing, uh, but so no, I've now had several sources come forward to me. You know, we can't name our sources, but these are sources that I completely trust that have been that have delivered for us before you know we've got an excellent record here at type 40 live look at uh, all the way through 2021 2022 in particular we were on the money every single time about the entire wrap-up of the god-awful chris chibnall era and these are the these are the same quality of sources that are coming to me with this information lots of people are sad about this the best thing about the comeback such a shame electric ball says uh, she's very likely to film for season three well how can you say that they're nowhere near filming a third season i was going to say we don't even know technically if shooty's going to do season three yet no. officially she, she might do fingers crossed if he they, doesn't if they renegotiate with her for further episodes it won't be under that original contact contract which was to co-lead this this show i'm as disappointed as you are electric ball i really liked her and also, it could have just been with her age. She's nineteen. Like yeah. soap being like not the not like if you're on a soap, you're sharing your screen time, you're sharing storylines. You're not the main attraction unless you've got like the killer storyline for that mm -hmm. bit of the time mm -hmm. in the schedule. To go from that to companion is it is a big shift. It is a big shift. And maybe, and obviously, like Ian said, we don't know her side, but maybe it just she couldn't hack it. And I'm not maybe, saying you have a go at maybe, her. Maybe it's saying... the fact that she, maybe it's the fact that she had an opinion, and that you know that uh, could be it too. This... But, yeah. but shooting a soap is far more difficult than shooting a drama. 
at least in dramas you get kind of time off of course it depends on on what part of the story that you're in but um it's relentless shooting sh shooting soaps it's but, absolutely relentless oh i know what you mean with the scheduling but i'm yeah. saying more you're not so much the core focus unless like i mm. said that the way the yeah. soap is you're sort of on a on a wheel and you might not be the focus for a bit and then you might come back into yeah. focus you're doing a lot of filming god yeah they do like workmen sort of filming shifts yeah. mm -hmm. but i'm saying the the companion and we've all like think about the battle of scrutiny every companion in the modern run and classic but i'm thinking more with press yeah with fan attention think about how much that is in modern who and how much billy's talked about it how uh, karen even the ones who've done very well have said at times it was a lot yeah it and was it, um it could have just been and this is not to have a go at her like i said it, it mm. might just not have been the right fit for her at this time. Yeah, but but yeah, I, yeah. I agree with Matt. Maybe she did. I, sorry, I don't agree with Matt. I, I'm, I'm considering what Matt's saying might be true. She might have said something out of place because you know what the the the, the whole playing field of of, uh, of shooting stuff in England is now. So she might have said something out of place and pissed off a couple of people. It might have been that side. Who knows? But I, I wait with bated breath to see an mm. interview with her and her explaining why. So it's going to come. You know it's going to come. So... Possible, yes. The role of the companion on Doctor Who, Sarah. You know, it's mm -hmm. you could say that it's like Lois Lane to Superman. It's just as important yeah, yeah. as the role of it the is. Doctor in many respects. It must come with its own pressures. Generally speaking, they do tend to be played by younger people because that's the dynamic that, that tends to work the very best, doesn't it? But a couple of people in the chat asking, you know, how many companions might have been sacked in the past? Probably more than we know, because yes. You know, we didn't really know the proper circumstances b behind John Pertwee leaving the series until a relatively short time ago, and he was the lead. So it's quite likely that things like this, you know, the, originally there was an, another actress, for example, played Sarah Jane Smith. Uh, she did she did a recording block, didn't, didn't she, mm -hmm. with John Pertwee? Yeah. It didn't work, and so she was let go. She was paid for the entire season, but let go. So there are these little blips in Doctor Who history so it's probably not unheard of. It's just now we're all over this all the time. Yeah, this is what it. I mean, yeah, because of the the status of the show, and just because how things have evolved, we we didn't know things were much more behind closed doors back yeah, in the day. And maybe, media. to be honest, maybe it should go back to that. Um, no, it, social it really, media, Sarah. It'd be bad news for this show if it did, but I, I, I'm not in, unsympathetic to that, Sarah, not at all. Uh, Black Love Studio it says, uh, asks, has Millie's exit been confirmed? No, and I don't think it will be for some time yet. But again, this is sources close to Type 40 have confirmed several sources now that she, yes, she has been sacked. She's been fired from the role of full-time companion, exactly as the newspaper said. You Matt. know, I can't wait for the for the launch for this new series because she's going to have to be involved in it, isn't she? Mm. She's going to have to be involved. She's going to have to be on the carpet, promote, talking yeah, it promote all it. up. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah, it'll, it'll be in the if contract. She's in IA, I was going to say, she, she'll be tied up in so many NDAs. Now, yeah. and so many agreements that you cannot say this, you have to say that. Like, so well, almost... and the, the, but it, 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 it'll be safe interviews, so there'll be there'll be no hardball questions like she won't be. So, interviewed. I, so I hear you were going, <laughs> she won't be interviewed, she won't yeah. be you won't see her in, in the promotion of this. I'd well, be, pretty, be pretty surprised if you, you did see her because in her contract, she, they'd have an out on it. The, 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 the people that do these contracts they're not stupid you know they have every exit way in that in that in that contract if they, if they don't want millie there they'll have an exit in that contract where they don't have her there do you know what i mean so i wouldn't be surprised if she wasn't promoting this this new doctor if you saw the christmas day one in you know they set up mm. several strands didn't they to several stories yeah. that are obviously going to go somewhere over different periods of time mm. so it's hard to know how much of this they've been able to to fix to sort of yeah. to cut off and to and to move around a little yeah yeah, yeah, they've, yeah. Done it, they've done it before they they could probably do it they could probably do it again uh, right. she's the youngest actor to play a companion a my guess is she was uh, too childish on set so they cast an old actor. That's what we've been saying on this show for a few weeks. Mm. Electric Well, they, they have replaced him with Virada Sethu from um, from Strike Back on, on Sky. 
and the uh, and that terrible Star Wars show. So they've they have replaced her with somebody who's like 31, 32. In fact, I think she's I think Seth who is older than older than Shuta Gatwa. So they've gone to somebody who's got a few more miles on the clock, doesn't mind the night shifts, obviously, and just happy to be in work. And uh, yeah, yeah, they've obviously found a solution which works for everybody. At least I hope, Gibson included. Some, so it doesn't make any sense though. Some someone like Millie Gibson, right? She's six. Well, how old is she? Sixteen? She's seventeen now. Nine, Nineteen. Nineteen, right? Everybody knows Doctor Who's a big deal. Why would mm. she screw it up unless she's really unhinged? And I don't think she is. I don't know. There's something mm. odd about this. Something odd. Well, mate, you've worked with, you know, you've told mm. me how many actors you've worked with, lots of different yeah. ages. I mean, let's not forget Millie Gibson has grown up on screen on Coronation yeah. Street. I think she was 12 or 13 when she mm. started when she started in this role. Uh, I've never, I've only seen a few scenes of it myself. Every time I see that shot of her stood in the dock there, I always think she's wearing a Star Trek uniform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah, this is her on Corrie, and people mm. loved her in this. They watched her grow up. Apparently some of these performances were incredible. Mm. And, but ha having said that, stage school kid, uh, always kind of grown up on set, Maybe they had lots of workarounds that were just for her, and they're used to her having watched her grow up. Do you, do you see what I'm saying, Charlotte? Maybe this being a bigger world-class production with other expectations, perhaps it just stretched the young woman a little too far. It's understandable, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and but I, I can't help but think, and if you have said it in the chat, this if it is because of her conduct and it's not because mm. of her acting and what she delivered on the set, it, it can't have been a little thing. It can't have no. just been, oh, she did a little bit annoyed. Do you know what? It, mm. In order for a firing or a sacking or whatever, I, letting I go, I'm... whatever term. Well, if you think about it this way, like Dan said, they set up a real, by the looks of it, quite a complex backstory with her. It's not just a simple, like, oh, she, the doctor's just found her off the street and it's just, here's my mum. That's my life. That's quite simple. Go mm -hmm. like she's clearly got a mystery or something about her backstory, mm -hmm. and it, it probably would have been written to go over two series. So yeah. it, to replace her actually inconveniences them. It actually causes issues for them. So this is my point. It must have been, mm -hmm. and the payoff must have been. Well, well, we'll have to rewrite or scrap or look or load of stuff versus her still being on set. See, and I think her being on set obviously seems to be the if bigger it was issue. The production money, downtime for all the technicians stood around doing nothing because one actor's late again. Is that the kind of knock on effects that you would see in on a production of that scale? That's never going to happen. I don't believe she was late on set because because she's been doing it for a long time. She knows the score. Working on Coronation Street is like a treadmill. You know, it's it, they they push you a lot on 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 soap. So I don't believe she was late on. Uh, look. She might have been, but I, I find it hard to believe that someone as professional that working in the industry as, as a young girl growing up in the industry is going to make a mistake like that. Or, or I reckon it's something more. I reckon it's something. Yeah, more. I think it, it could like. be right. I, yeah. think, I think technically uh, that, that place is very toxic. I think that's a toxic workplace. And I think that they were just looking for an excuse to get rid of her and, you know, any little thing. So, um, you know, uh, it it's just it's just not. It's just not fair. I'm going to miss her dancing. I really am. <laughs> <laughs> At Fly Highland says, put Millie and Chris Eccleston in a room together with a microphone equals gold. Uh, Electric Bull says, Russell uh, wrote season two in 2022. Wouldn't that mean a new companion was always going to happen? Not necessarily. It depends yeah. on the stories. And, of course, being... Being that ahead of production, they're only one block into filming them now, one and a half blocks. Mm -hmm. It depends on the nature of the stories, whether they are a do a done in one adventure stories. They could be tuning things up, turning things down. They have the luxury of time now. We may be able to tell when these things are on screen because they've had to kind of roll with punches before. But th these are the kind of things we're only really going to know the answer to. Once the things are on screen, I feel Sarah. Do you, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think, yeah. The proof will be in the pudding and the um, editing, and where, yeah, we'll see where this story arc goes. Whether it has been toned down, mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, it, it's doable. I mean, you know, look at Bill was a very short companion. She made a huge impression. Mm -hmm. Does it mean 
no, people no. aren't going to necessarily not care about her. But you know, if she is, if she proves to be popular, it will just be very unfortunate. You know what, right? I did like Bill. I didn't like the the stuff she kept saying that she was gay and all that rubbish. Didn't like any of that she stuff. Was? As a companion, <laughs> as a companion, I thought she was really, um, you know, really she, good. She, and she, I really she, liked the dynamic yeah. between him, her, and um, and Peter. I thought it worked she, very she was well. Re she was refreshing. I mean, yeah, she was. And she worked really well with Peter. And I was yeah. good at what happened to her. Yeah, so was I. So was I. And I, I, it's a shame, really. Um, yeah. Anyway, here's hoping uh, Millie, you know, moves forward and. You know, and finds other work and stuff like. Because I don't believe for a second that she was unprofessional. There's no way she grew up in this industry. She grew up in the on TV, so there's no way she would do something as silly as turn up late or. Do you know what I mean? She's well versed in. in that might just be what's filming. been said by someone. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. There's something more. more. There's something That's more. What I'm saying it's an excuse. Yeah, well, maybe. Who knows? There is Who cares? Likely, just as the time, <laughs> yeah. just as the time scale says, it's, it's highly likely oh, this NDA is NDA is locked in place and will be for a good period of time. Yeah, good period of time now. Uh, Fly Highland speculates on the mm. firing of Peter Purvis, yes. uh, Michael Craze. We, I don't know about that, but I do, We all know that Jackie Lane was fired. She spoke about that. Obviously, the mm -hmm. late actress who played yeah. Dodo spoke about that many, many times. Was very um, so bitter about it that she left acting. For the rest Chris of the Eggleston life. Chris recently yeah. spoke about how much he didn't like the producers in in one uh, what is it the uh, com con thing, isn't he? Mm -hmm. You know, so you know yeah. if the truth will come out. It's just going to take ages <laughs> for us yeah. to, yeah. to know well, the, the truth. Truth will out, everybody. In the meantime, just as Mark Milford says, buy her mm -hmm. action figure, action figure quick. Um, yeah, if well, it comes out, get the if Ruby it comes Sunday. out, are they still marketing it? We just yeah, don't expect know, a don't repaint. Know. <laughs> <laughs> yes you never you never know do you but let us know what you think of it all yes the uh the firing of millie gibson as ruby sunday is the full-time companion does this mean that choppy waters will will definitely be ahead and more to the point be visible on screen too and could actually harm harm the show uh, let's just let's hope it doesn't but how can it not? You remember the chaos in Cardiff story from a few years ago now at the dead centre of the Chris Chibnall era that did absolutely show on screen there. That was during the filming of Fugitive of the Jadoon, which obviously was a total nightmare in absolutely every sense. Let's just hope that history doesn't repeat itself. But obviously, you know, we it do is. here at Type 40 wish Millie Gibson all the very, very best. We just enjoy while we've got her. Uh, so far, Call based me, on what Millie. we've seen, I, I agree. I'll, I'll, um... <laughs> <laughs> I agree with everything that you said, Matt. I think she's a, and that's, it's not just you. So many people in the chat agree <sighs> with you. Uh, people loved her at Christmas. The a highlight for many, many people. So she let's was. just hope this. What, whatever they, whatever the reason they've done this, let's just hope it's worth. It was worth day. it. Mm. I hope it was worth it, and that it it doesn't harm this young woman's career, and yet yeah, she can get get back on track. I suppose. Uh, we, sh we shall see. Maybe something will be confirmed sooner rather than later. Don't know, don't know. Uh, yes, uh, but whilst whilst Millie has been uh, going around the Aldi with the parents there and getting snapped by the paps, uh, her co-star, her former co-star, has been out and about. It was the 96th Academy Awards at the weekend. That's the Oh, hello. It was held at the Dolby Theatre in Hollywood, of course it was, and that's where they present present those uh, golden statues, don't they? In <laughs> the Oppenheimer won really, really big, um, whereas uh, the last year's most talked about film, which is probably Barbie, didn't re went very, very much at all. But uh, the high point, I suppose, was that at least some of the cast members of Barbie, well, they got to do a little dance. Did you see that? Got to do a little dance. Yeah, no, but was... it's telling that they never had Barbie. It was Ken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very well, telling, yeah, isn't it? Brian Gosling was the standout star of that movie. Don't, yeah, don't mm. hate the play. I hate the game. That's that's what happened. Uh, yeah. But I haven't seen that film yet. But I did. I did see this routine. Of course, it was a. It was completely excruciating. And if you can't know, Shuti Gatwa obviously was in that. Our incumbent doctor was in Barbie. I'm I'm told he's little more than an extra in it, Ian, as it turned yeah, out. Well, yeah. But he yeah. did. He was taking part in that dance routine. Now you can't quite make him out here 
on screen. But if you look to the right, he's the one casting the shadows of the camera. There's a, a little <laughs> unfortunate, but you can't. Oh, you yeah, can't, okay. But you can see him there on the bottom right. So at least he did get some stage time. Got to uh, yeah. throw some shapes, yeah. I think. Throw some shapes. <laughs> can you dance like this, Matt? How would you fare? Do you think you've got much Ken in you? Would you like some? <laughs> Um, I I haven't heard the song even, so you know I, <laughs> it, it it has zero interest for me. I it's just not my thing. Although I do like to play with dolls, but not these kind. So mm. yeah, no, definitely not. <laughs> so would you have you seen Barb yet, Sarah? Is this... No, um, I know the song. Uh, my, my niece went to see it. She really enjoyed it. Um, but she again, she said, you know, it, it's Ken, who you know was the standout, and this song just showed it me on, on a phone. I did. I, I don't watch the Oscars. I haven't watched the Oscars since um, 2004, when Return of the King won everything. I think that was the last time I watched it in full. I did watch it. I do like Ryan Gosling. I just, I just think he's so funny, and he, he's clearly having a ball. He should have won, really. Um, for yeah, but yeah, I was more. I, I completely forgot that Shooty was even there until I saw the photos. Um, yeah, good for him. He's having fun. Uh, yeah, four yeah, minutes of screen good. time, according to CTC in that movie, Sarah. Oh, oh my word! Uh, yeah, it's the only chance he'll be on that stage. I can tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get we can see him a little yeah. better there, but that slash yeah. from Guns and Roses, uh, there playing guitar, which is. Pretty cool, sort of. I mean, he's probably drawing his pension there, but he still looks very, very capable. Obviously, Ryan Gosling is, is a, a star, very much still in ascendance. There doesn't seem to be anything that guy can do that, that doesn't do well. People just like him. and But the impression I get is that people still don't even know that Shooty Gatwa was in that movie, Charlotte. It's just not... <laughs> well, he was, he well, was he a kid, and he was... He was one of the extra Kens, so nobody would really care. Let's be honest. He had blonde hair too, didn't he? In that movie. He yes, I think he hair. did because he he had it a little bit on like red carpets afterwards when he. I think so. He, it was very noticeable. Like, so you oh, haven't right. seen Barbie then? No, I watched oh. Oppenheimer. I watched Oppenheimer. You're my kind of girl. <laughs> Well, I, I have to say that it, I've seen neither of them, but Barbie was easily the most talked about film of last year, which is a, a good thing. It had people it had people talking and not just the kind of conversations that have dominated the popular culture for a number of years now, Ian. It did seem to get people talking about different things across across the political spectrum and different interpretations of it, which I think is, is what good film should do. But uh, Simon Anthony says, Ian, that Barbie is a better film than Oppenheimer, which is too long and upsetting, not entertainment, but a documentary. I expected to hate Barbie, but even philosophically, it was deeper than Oppenheimer. So that's a, that's a deep cut there from Simon. <laughs> Lots of people seem to go to see both, according to this in the live chat, though, Ian. Mm, Oppenheimer, I saw. I didn't. I never saw Barbie. Oppen I really enjoyed Oppenheimer. I thought I was going to be bored how silly. Long, how long was that film like go for? Like <laughs> three, 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 I think. Rest than three. I couldn't sit there for that long. It was. Good. It was enjoyable. And, it, and it, it was good. Bored. Yeah. I wasn't bored. Not once. It was. It was very enjoyable. No, very. very no, well I'm talking about pee time. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and it was well, lovely to see Robert Downey Jr. in what well, Oppenheimer, yeah, not yes. being Tony Stark. It was very yes. good. That was like, oh, he was fantastic. Oh, he's he a was. Fantastic he, was. he won an Oscar, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he got yeah. it over yeah. Ryan Gosling. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah. So it is. Uh, no, it is worth watching if you if you guys want to check it out. I, I like I like the marketing for Barbie. Like that was Netflix. fun when they had. Yeah. You remember when we there were the big like Barbie packaging Barbie. outside various yeah. cinemas and stuff that yeah was it was really all fun. it was all marketed really really well and yeah. it did feel like a pop culture moment which as i say we haven't had too many of those in that i think the end game was probably the last one that i can yeah. really think mm -hmm. of so i think that has to be a good thing for cinema for cinema generally obviously the oscars they're a different question in some respects seeing our incumbent doctor there at the oscars it's it's quite cool. I mean, there he is. It, it looks very pleasant. Looks like he's having a good time. Looks relaxed. Doesn't have to do any more dancing. Very dashing there in his, albeit Cuban heels. Very flashy suit there at the Oscars. Uh, but this isn't where... Now, I saw this and I thought, oh, bless him. What a great representative 
of Doctor Who. Thank heaven for Shuti Gatwa. There's lots of video of him working the red carpet there, being very charming with journalists and all that manner of thing. A few hours later, of course, because the time dis- time difference, I woke up to pictures because it didn't end there. The Oscars never do, do they? It continues with Elton John's after party in West Hollywood Park. <laughs> Now, this year, this was hosted. This, this party happens every year, and this time it was hosted by the toy maker himself, Matt Neil, Patrick Harris. And traditionally, people do tend to go and have a bit of a scrub up and change their clothes to go to Elton John's after party. And this is what Shooty Gatwa turned up wearing for that. <laughs> Everyone, I imagine uh, it's been a few days now. Everybody must have seen these pictures. Uh, I couldn't stop laughing when I saw them. I immediately thought of Simon Horton. Because I know that yep. he, he loves he loves <clears throat> to see what shoot he's wearing. He'll be devastated that he's missed tonight. But my God, we have seen Shooty Gat while wearing some ridiculous things in the last 18 months. I I like my stars to be eccentric and to be a bit out there, Ian. But even I've got my limits. This it looks absolutely ridiculous. And quite honestly, at Elton John's party there in that swanky West Hollywood place. If I'm surprised when it, when he was there, if somebody didn't mistake him for a, uh, a splashback in one of the urinals, maybe <laughs> could have got quite nasty for him. Bit of sp- hmm. <laughs> Probably needed. I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering: can we actually pan to the left and see if R2D2's there? Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I tell you what, no. Yeah, it looks like something the, from the '80s. Like what '80s would think of in the future? Like, yeah, I was what, thinking like. Do you know like 80 music 80s music videos? Yeah. Like yeah. Janet Jackson, that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh god. Cool. <laughs> Uh, Charlie, yes, you're you just getting imagine. better and better in my mind. <laughs> I know. As you can imagine, this is going down a storm in the live chat here on YouTube, yes. Rumble, and Facebook. Gary Akers <laughs> this thing. Goodness. Is it? Is it a it film, Matt? It's, it's not a Schumacher film, that's for sure. I was literally going to say that, Matt. Is it? It, it looks like a cast off from uh, Batman. <laughs> As I say, I like my stars to be eccentric and do mad stuff. But wow, this is really taking the biscuit. He's partly Cyberman, yeah, speculates yeah. Simon Anthony. That's yeah, maybe that's maybe he's doing that. I, maybe I don't know. Don't celebrities get their get their clothes handmade these days? Asks Richard Brooks. Is that true, Ian? Don't care. I don't know. <laughs> don't care. It looks like they dipped him in metal. Like, like an ice cream, you know? He looks like he just went to, like, a set after dark and nicked the first thing he could see that nobody had. It's like, that will do. That's my costume. <laughs> I mean, to say to say he looks a bit of a penis is putting it mildly, isn't it? But I, I, I don't know. Well, he has got a like helmet it. on it. <laughs> uh, Tony Farrell says I was taught that if you can't say anything nice say nothing I've absolutely nothing to say about that get up wise words Big T wise words Dan run away now <laughs> advises Richard Brooks word up smart casual and weird says Peter Harrington it actually, uh, had, uh, a, uh, uh, actually had a warning actually had a warning when, when he was approaching you no magnets so. <laughs> Darren, M. Darren M says I think Zendaya and Shooty showed up in the same costume and decided to split it between them yeah. yes I've seen that picture from a couple yeah. of weeks ago oh she year. looked bloody damn hot in that jeez did you see oh, so, that okay. my god I, I she, did see that I'm just surprised she really, you liked it she really didn't Matt she really didn't no, oh, well, they, no. You, you're a girl <laughs> didn't, didn't, do, didn't do nothing for me uh, CTC oh. speculates uh, that that top just that chest piece there could have cost around 300 quid i think it probably cost about several thousand pounds what, yeah. what, what does anybody know let's know in the live chat or in the comments how much was shooty's weird chest sort of choker thing yeah i'd like to know that I, too. I, I do a bit of me thinks though the more he comes out in these ridiculous outfits Mm. The, the less people are going to actually want to talk about his acting in Doctor Who. I I think that's the that's the bad side. In all seriousness, yeah. that's the serious side to it, isn't it? Serious, Charlotte's right. He, well, he's going to end up just another wacky celebrity like Madonna yeah. and uh, you know Sam Smith and all Charmelay. that. Ones, he's not yeah. going to be taken seriously and shit because I don't think he can act. Unless um, he's got pants on. Is it <laughs> it's a start. <laughs> it, is, it is a start. But oh, it's such a shame because he looked really smart and handsome in that 
he looked in great, that didn't tuxedo. He? Yeah. I'm like, he looks really nice in normal. When he looks normal. And he went, <laughs> I did see a little bit of the interviews and it was charming. He's got a beautiful smile. He's very infectious. Oh, yes. Very charismatic. And I'm like, just be like this. But then he has to spoil it. Well, for me, anyway, maybe some people like that. I because no, I agree, the bloke in the in the black suit there looks very sophisticated and, and a good, not necessarily ambassador for Doctor Who, because that's not really why he was there. But I certainly think he represented himself well. You know, a handsome young actor on the brink of possible global stardom if if Doctor Who goes as it should, and and maybe if he gets more film roles, it's a, an all important time for him. But. Mm, yeah. He looked like he didn't look like shooty like that. It looks like his character Eric in Sex Education, who wears wacky <laughs> stuff and experiments with clothes and makeup and things. It it looks like a caricature of himself. Of himself, it's, yeah. It's yeah, becoming a standing joke. You just yeah, and you just that's the problem now. It's becoming a joke. It's becoming like just that's all. And I'm thinking more like I said, not people who aren't who fans, who are the general public who might not even realise he's the new Doctor in a way because they haven't promoted it enough yet. I really true. am shocked yeah. by the yes, that's Because they're not I've, promoting Charlotte, it yet. I've seen more pictures of him wearing this this week than I have in the two, say, yeah, let's say three months of his tenure as the Doctor because he took over at the end of the giggle. I've seen more pictures of this than I have of him in costume as the doctor, anyway. yeah, and and that's gonna st my and that's what's gonna stick in your head, not his doctor. That's and like we've said this before, the best actors don't let themselves overshadow the doctor they're playing. Like Matt disappeared into his doctor, even though he's got a very odd look about him, he can come across a bit weird, like in the best way in interviews when Matt mm -hmm. gets interviewed. But when he was in the show and when he was doing anything press. He, he, you just thought, there's the 11th Doctor. You didn't think of, there's Matt Smith. Same with all the other Doctors. Every Now, I, I think it's going to be increasingly hard for people when they see Shooty outside the role or doing promotion or doing anything to think, there's the what 14th, I can't remember what number he is now off my head. There's the 14th Doctor. They'll go, oh, there's that idiot who wears stupid costumes. <laughs> like, that's yeah. What's, yeah. The problem yeah. here, I don't think he's realising it. I'm afraid so. I think you. I think you could be right about that. It's. Uh, it is. It's very, very sad, uh, but it's a, a fact of reality. As I say, I like my stars to be starry. Uh, well, I like. I like starry even more. Hey, oh, thank you. I like my stars to be oh, starry. No, I, I, listen, I'm, I like you, Dan. I'm not wearing a chest plate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gary Akers says if Sydney Sweeney wants to wear that, that's a different story. Uh, based, Mr. Mr. Akers, based. I like I like that answer very very much. Hi everyone, says late arrival Troy. Uh, he's a joke. He's not the Doctor. He's a joke, says Lord Thoth. And this is winding people up, and I can I can completely see why. I I, I can see why. Uh, might be the angle of the photo. But his right tit looks odd. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Sarah, Sarah, I've got yeah. several thousand dollars here if you wanna, like American dollars here if you wanna, if, if you if you wanna wear a chest plate like that. Well, there's there's a handprint on his on his breast there. I think is the polite way of putting it. So yeah, who knows? Yeah. Who knows what's uh, how that got there? Uh, elegant looks best. On Mr. Gatwa as Leo Ward. He is classically good looking, high yes. cheekbones, etc. More Fred Astaire, less Tin Man. Yeah, I, again, yeah, I, exactly I think. Exactly, Leo. Yeah, maybe. I, I, say I can't put this down to youth. He's the other side of 30. But there we are. That's Shooty Gatwa at the. <laughs> God. That's Shooty Gatwa <laughs> at the Oscars <laughs> this week. What am I, Matt, what am I saying? What am oh, I saying? Gosh. Oh, gosh. You've got to laugh. You've You're just looking at him. the pure beauty of him. Seriously, mm. he's so beautiful. Yeah, so all this talk <laughs> about, about Shooty there looking like the, the splash back in a urinal may have got you itching to, <laughs> to spend a penny. Another couple Better than of looking minutes. like the soap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it may, it may have got you there already. We've got another couple of minutes worth of uh, magic moments, memories and old tat now, all being flogged by, by our legends, the, the cast of Doctor Who, past 
from the classic series and the new series. And now, and again, people from the all new series too. Yes, it's the Type 40 live ad break. And if you can't stand to miss the ads, you haven't got long you've got to hold it in for because we'll be back in a couple of minutes, everybody. Cat Supreme, high in protein. Kitty cats. To satisfy a cat's appetite for life. High protein kitty cat. You couldn't have a fitter cat. In the history of robots, one breed stands out as the epitome of evil, and they're back to wreak mayhem and havoc. On oh, my foot! Yeah, I've got the power. Inflict your revenge this Christmas on the new remote control Dalek. Yeah, they've got the lot, the flashing lights, electronic banter, and the idle threats. And they're all useless when it comes to climbing the stairs. The new remote control Dalek is now available for $69.99 by dialing 0800 975 4591. Frustrating, isn't it? When you need an any-purpose loan but don't know who to talk to about unlocking the capital tied up in your property. Even if you're self-employed, consider yourself to have a low credit rating, divorced or retired. Don't worry, because Ocean Finance hold the key. Call 0800 858 858 and Ocean could help you. Ocean loans can be used for any purpose and all circumstances will be considered. You may wish to improve your home or buy a newer car or simply consolidate all your existing debts into just one manageable monthly payment. There are no interviews, no arrangement fees, and no salesperson will call. So for that homeowner loan, call now. You'll be under no obligation, and you could secure the loan you need. Call Ocean Finance now on 0800 858 858. That's 0800 858 858. Pop! Smash it! 100% pure pop! Yes, this is Type 40 Live, where we cover all things Doctor Who, the world's longest-running, best-loved sci-fi and fantasy TV series, both on and off-screen. All of it, yeah, back here after the adverts there. Hope you enjoyed those. A little bit of a breather there. And now, now back to the action. I'm Dan, and you're watching live on YouTube, Rumble, and Facebook. It's not all about us, though. Let's have your comments in the live chat, too, as we get into some more of it. Or hit us up on the social medias, Instagram and X at Type 40 Doctor Who. Are they back? Yes, I'm back here. I'm back here with the panel, I think. Am I back? I'm back. Sort of. Yes, here they are. Back. Yes, I've got Charlotte Shields. We've got the mega geeky yeah. and David Diaz. I got Matt. changed oh, yeah. just for Matt. I want my money. This is the closest I've got. Right? Oh. <laughs> Pay up. Pay up. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, let's see. I'm, so I'm glad the fact that you got changed. There you go. There's a dollar. <laughs> it's the fastest <laughs> I've ever got changed. I'm, I'm out of breath now. <laughs> okay, so we're back from the adverts. Somebody clicked that. Them. You can <laughs> <laughs> yes, people love the Type 40 live ad break. Oh, Long-term yeah. feature here. 1990s Cats yeah. asks uh, Leo Ward. Looks like it. Yeah. That was the, that was the late Mary Tam, wasn't it? The original Romana there giving uh, giving some kitty cat to her her pussy. Oh, if, yeah. uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> oh God! That, I, Even that, that was like, Dan, that's not good. <laughs> That stuff stank. Cat, I'm, I'm going to gloss over it. Just get uh, cat food today <laughs> smells so much better, says Crimpling Doubloon, a connoisseur of the cat food world. Who'd have thought it? You learn something new every day. Port Merion spots Peter Harrington. That was in the Fraser Hines ad there for Ocean Finance, wasn't it? He was allegedly, looked like he was in Port Merion, strolling around the, the clubhouse there. Way, Jamie got a job, says Cinnamon oh, Toast Crunch. Uh, Jamie the Lone Shark, as Matthew found out. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, Simon Anthony says, I'm an actor these days. No, really. I've been on telly and everything. I won't do adverts in huge letters. Oh. They're very, very resistant to adverts. There is our Simon, uh, Sarah. Well, I wonder if you, but they had a bad experience with a packet of Daz. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, YW asks, what year were these commercials from? Like 1980 or something? They, from, from, they were from all over the place, YW. They're from all throughout the time and space continuum. As always, Simon Anthony is available for Doctor Who. He, step, he stipulates... Uh, Classic Who is the best show ever made, says, uh, says Troy. Mm-hmm. And uh, Cinnamon Toast Crunch has uh, just drops an emoji. I don't don't really know what don't know what you're talking about, CTC. Don't know what you're no. talking about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you went to again, Dan. Ask <laughs> the don't. Don't know what we mean. He shoots his <laughs> course. Uh, yes, so I'm glad you're enjoying it so far. And why Why on earth wouldn't you? We've uh, we've dished out some, some home truths, I think, here yeah. on this edition of the show uh, concerning Millie Gibson, of course, Ruby Sunday from, from TV's Doctor Who. So some bad news there if you're a Ruby Sunday or Millie Gibson fan, for that matter. But we are, we're rooting, we're rooting. I'm going to miss her, I can tell you. Oh, oh. oh. Poor Matt, it's going to take a while to a while to get over that, very mm-hmm. very clearly. Um, okay, let's uh, let's cheer you up, Matt, and uh, cast your mind back to the year 2010, when this gentleman yeah. took over the reins of Doctor Who as a showrunner. Now he'd been involved in the show for a few years at that point. If you remember, his first script was The Empty Child, starring Christopher Eccleston. For, for series one back then. And his final script ended up being 2017's Twice Upon a Time, which starred Peter Capaldi there again with Pearl Mackey as Bill Pott and David Bradley playing the first Doctor. That's a big, long, long stint. Stephen Moffat was, was there. Well, in the last few months, Stephen Moffat has been probed regularly. Uh, in fact, I think it's, it's a, a byproduct of the return of... Who's laughing? Who's laughing? I kept a straight face. You yeah, should- right. Listen, yes, so Stephen Moffat has been probed regularly about maybe returning to write for Doctor Who. After all, Russell T. Davis has, and he has remained steadfast that he's not going to do that. You know, he's dropped various comments, hasn't he, about, you know, you wouldn't want me to do that. It would be career suicide, all that jazz. But just this week, now this has turned up on producer Alison Sterling's CV. She's got Stephen Moffat listed as a writer alongside director Alex Pillay on the Series 15 Doctor Who Christmas special. This was up on her online CV. It was removed very, very quickly. Uh, Numerous news sources, such as Radio Time, have asked the BBC and Bad Wolf for a comment, and they've refused. Oh, oh, it's happening then. So it is. (laughs) Well, this is it. If they're refusing to comment... That does usually suggest, doesn't it, that it's that it's a positive. Now, again, I'm going to go on record and say that before Christmas, that we had several reliable sources confirmed to us in time that Stephen Moffat will be writing for Shooty Gatwa's Doctor as part of the all-new series. Now, again, this is something we've been reluctant to, to talk about, but I've got it from very reliable sources. So, yes, he is writing for the new Doctor. He is back on the writing staff. I've got no idea which episode episode he could be contributing to the series. And and this is the thing with this, Ian, because we've got a listing there, obviously. That's for the Christmas special that's coming up this Christmas, which we assume is going to air on on Christmas Day because that's what always used to be the case. And that does have been Russell T. Davies' ambition. He re-established it. Christmas just gone. But if you remember, not that long ago, in fact, it was around November time, wasn't it? Russell T. Davis said that he was writing that next Christmas special. He said, you know, oh, this is the first time I've been writing a Christmas special at Christmas. So they both can't be writing it. Either Russell's writing it or Stephen Moffat's writing it. So what do you think it is? Like I say, I, I'll say now you heard it here on Type 40 Live. Stephen Moffat is coming back to Doctor Who. He has written scripts for The New Doctor. But could it be possible that wires have got crossed here because Russell has insisted in the past that he's writing that special? What are you thinking? Ian? Well, if you if you say your sources says that he's actually doing it, then I would, I would go with that. He's doing it. But quite frankly, again, right, I, you know, if people like this, then fine. But I'm not going to be watching, so I don't really give a hoot, really, whoever writes it or uh, not. Well, so. Stephen and Russell are friends. It might be that Russell was aiming to write it, realise he hasn't got time 
passing it on to a trusted friend. Well, it's going to be better than up. rope talk, isn't it? You know what I mean? Well, it's yeah, be it, yeah. That, at rubbish. least, at least, um, you know, mm. it might be good. <laughs> yeah. Or, or maybe they, they always. It was all. all it was always going to be Moffat, and Russell was just saying it to hide it. And now this CV has blurted it out before they wanted mm. to officially reveal Moffat was writing it. Because I can't help but think, with the way the specials got received, with the way the viewing figures went for those specials, I don't mm. think they got the big splash, the big sort of, ta-da, they thought they were going to get. So bringing in, having an announcement of Moffat returning, I think they would They're do it everything. very... Yeah, basically, yeah, they do it very much in that sense of, right, that's not worked. Let's announce Moffitt. Let's get the fandom really hyper and really excited yeah. again. And that's what I think this would do, honestly, because... It won't. We won't, at... we, we, we're not that stupid to fall for it again. We're not. So, uh, you know, majority of Doctor Who fans don't like this era. And it doesn't matter if you bring back Moffitt or you bring back Pertweed from the dead. It ain't going to change anything. The, the 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 actual problem of Doctor Who is the problem of Doctor Who. So, so you know, aren't you? Really so you're not, mm. you're not uh, persuaded a little, Ian, because obviously they have said they haven't disclosed the identities of many people who are either writing or directing on yeah. the all new series of Doctor Who. Uh, so there's lots of unknown quantities. The fact that Stephen Moffat is the most known of quantities. This man has written more <laughs> Doctor Who. Than, this man has now written more Doctor Who than literally mm. any other writer. And mm. here he is coming back to the show. Does that not make you feel a little more confident that there might be something, some some robust stories there that are at least going to be um, be serviceable and engaging and be and be very competently written by somebody who has, in his time, uh, made some very memorable Doctor Who? No, c c it doesn't matter if you bring back um, uh, Moffat. I do like Moffat's writing. But it doesn't matter if you bring it back. The, 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 doctor, the whole point of Doctor Who is wrong. This is not Doctor Who. So you can bring back Spielberg to direct for all I care. He's not directing this, not directing Doctor Who. He's not writing for Doctor Who. He's writing for something completely, I don't know what it is now. So good luck to everyone on that. As I said, I have nothing against people who like the, who's going to like this era. Good luck. But for me, I'm out. I'm out. See, there's I'm, the, I'm the opposite hold now. Hold on a second. There's, oh. there's a reasonable question here in the live chat. Yeah. People are, have, quite, have, have noticed that this is the Series 15 Christmas special. Now, not only would they have us believe that they've gone back to Season 1 and Season 2, so we've got that confusion, <laughs> but we've got that mm. confusion back on the table. But people are wondering, if this is the Series 15 Christmas special, then does this mean that this is the special for Christmas 2025? That it'll come afterwards? I don't think that's how they're working it. I think that the church, for example... My perception of it, Sarah, is that the Church on Ruby Road is technically the Series 14 Christmas special because it was the start of the production block. And, yes. the, and that the Series 15 Christmas special will also be the start of a production block. Is that, is that how... It, yeah, so it will, be, it will be this year's... This will be this year's Christmas special. This is Series 15. I mean, that would explain how the special could have two writers because then Moffat could be writing the one after. And maybe it is a mistake on this. So I can see why people are asking that. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I mean, they'd, they've made it more complicated than it needs to be by referring it to different things. Um, I mean, I remember, I mean, they did try this, didn't they? With Was it Series 5? They tried to make it Series 1 again with yeah. the Matt Smith here and it, it just didn't work. Um yeah, no, what I was going to say, no, I, this is the most excitement I've had for this new era. Because nothing <laughs> has worked for... I, I know, not, I'm a huge Moffat fan. And uh, and not just Doctor Who, I love you. I really love coupling as well and other things. Yeah, done. coupling was good. Um, it's just because it's a proper announcement, like we've been saying. There's been no directors announced that we know. There's been no writers to, you know, to get excited about this actually feels like a genuine announcement. Oh, or at least we know what we're going to get with Moffat. Have they announced um, it? They haven't officially no. announced it now. No, none of this, none of this has been announced in. But as I say, this is this is oh. something the trusted sources have confirmed to me. And several people, you know, I'm very careful about what we say because people do tell me things, but I, I tend to mm. wait until two or three people independently do say the same thing to me because you know what it's mm. like when you say things in this community. 
if if it doesn't happen, ah, you were lying, you were lying, you know. You can't. Yeah. He's well, lying. I, he's lying. Yeah. Your Grant's going to be in it as well. That's you? right. I hope so. <laughs> You're always very no, confident in everything that we bring on this show. If it's appeared on this official thing and it's been removed, I, I think, yeah, it, it was going to be announced. They've just been waiting, and it, mm. again, it, it's just something that's got leaked. Early, but I, I, I mean, I'll come back on later in the year. If I'm wrong, I'll say I'm wrong. But I, I have a very strong feeling that this is probably going to happen. I mean, YW well, here says Charlotte get someone new. So uh, some people really don't want any old names, even so, even these uh, dependable names mm -hmm. who know the show better than anybody else they just want new people and that's a that's a fair take as well oh yeah i completely understand because russell's come back and some of his bits of the scripts and some parts of the stories have been very weak they've not been as strong yeah. work in the slightest nothing that even i who enjoyed quite enjoyed the church and ruby road enjoyed the, the good bit of the giggle bar and the ending basically even I can say no. He's not touched anything he did two thousand five onwards yet. That's still not. That's still leagues above what he's written so far. So the the prospect of another old hand basically would make people go, no, it's not worked so far with Russell. Why would it work with Moffat? But my first hint was Moff was way before any of this. As soon as I think it was Moffat who let out that he'd seen the audition tape for Shooty. And that first like got my ears sort of pricked up because mm -hmm. I was thinking, why would you want why would Russell give you the audition tape? That's something that you would give somebody if you had them in mind for writing that character. Because he, he couldn't write shoot his doctor without seeing something, without having something to be the starting point for him to write to any sort of like rhythm or what they were going to do with shooty so that audition tape for me was the first real signal that moffitt's going to do something with shooty yeah and i, mean, I, my, I my felt feeling... the same way but something like that isn't conclusive either is it when you've got two people who are close friends who work in the same industry who understand the pressures of both having shared a role and know the responsibilities of it you think if there's so if there's somebody working in the sector and who's also a, fe a fellow fan who you can trust, it would probably be him, It'd be him yeah. and Mark Latis and probably two or three other people, and that would probably be about the limit of it. So I, I think you're probably right. You know, that's, uh, that has – but there are reasons why. You know, just a, I, I, think that, I think that Russell T. Davies, I think he views very few writers as his peers, mm -hmm. uh, but Stephen Moffat is one of them. And so yeah, I think you would ask him for because they said they've been friends for so long. They were in the same fan circles before they became writers yeah, right. in two thousand and five for the show. So they've got a massive history. And for me, even though Moffat has got his faults, very much so when he's not when he gets too sort of complex with his stories and too sort of ego driven to be how mm -hmm. clever almost it got at points with his era. If he's actually doing a one-off story, like a contained special, I think that's the best format for him to write because mm -hmm. it can be distilled, it can be very concentrated. He can really drill down to whatever idea he's possibly mm -hmm. penned for it. So I'd rather have Moffat do maybe a one-off episode now and again. I do not want him to come back as like a proper writer for the series because I agree then it will be just going back too much to old things but yeah. well it depends on how many ideas he scribbled down in the meantime doesn't it we've got a couple of comments <laughs> like this in the live chat too let's be honest Moffat has written a few clunk clunker episodes of Doctor Who during his time that's true yeah, but even, Robert, it's very even true. Robert Holmes even Robert Holmes dropped the odd bollock you know no no uh, Doctor Who writer has a completely mm -hmm. clean sheet do they Sarah uh, when no, no, no. says I have to agree with Ian, it doesn't matter who they bring back now. This doesn't feel like Doctor Who anymore. My heart has been broken too many times now. So when Wendy's out, Wendy's out, I, I, agree. Agree. I, 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 I can, and I can understand that when and I, can, I completely understand where <laughs> Ian's coming from as well. Crimpling Bloom describes this as a fresh coat of paint on the <laughs> Titanic as the lifeboats <laughs> are being lowered. Ian, that's yeah. a very vivid, very vivid oh, picture. Dear. There. It's also confusing, mm. says CTC. I've, I've been confused for years, mate. I've been confused for years. Bring, please don't bring him back. 
It's it's bad. Russell T. Davis has the show. Doctor Who is dead. Fact oh. says Nathan Huggins. Well, it's um, I, I don't uh, yeah, I don't hold with that. Doctor Who is dead. Yeah. Well, it's it, it, I hope it's not. It, Otherwise, it, we're all out of a job, Nathan, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, Doctor Who is not dead. I, I, with with respect, uh, but obviously, whatever the current Doctor Who, whatever the vibe of it, whatever the editorial uh, decisions of it are, it's going to work for some people. It's not going to work for others. Just like other eras. But we've gone over that Doctor Who is Dead stuff on, here on the on the show before, and, and it's not something I subscribe to. But you're entitled to to your opinion. Uh, when says we always have the classic series, my love for Doctor <laughs> Who will live on there. Mm. And so I thought that there'd be a little more interest in Stephen Moffat coming back. Uh, I, I, I sincerely did. Um, what yeah, from us? Clearly, no, from, <laughs> from, from no, from people. No, from people generally, Matt. From yeah. okay, people generally. You know, looking through the live chat. And obviously, he's still got his fans. Yeah, but, but Dan, uh, they've they've really dented it, haven't they? They've really kind of kind of destroyed the doc, Doctor Who as we know it. So why would anyone be a joyous that um, he's coming back? It's like painting the Titanic, as they said. You know, it's going to go down anyway. So I mean, you know, I do why even Nathan, bother? I do agree with Nathan Huggins' point here that the show needs new blood. People who it does more to the point because I do I do believe that Russell is going to bring on new blood. You know, he does. He mentors new writers, and I believe he will bring some of those through and other contacts he's made. So I believe we will get that. Mm -hmm. But the second half of your statement is probably more uh, probably more important at this crucial time because yes. the show is reestablishing itself. So people who know what to do with the show know how the show works. I think that's actually more important right yeah. now. And so my dream scenario, actually, Charlotte, is to have uh, eight episodes, four written by either newish writers or people who have had some success writing other popular drama shows like Line of Duty or things that have been popular, like Luther and all mm. these things, mm. and, and to balance that out with with uh, the equivalent four writers, Jamie Matheson, Stephen Moffat, if he wants to. you know, So you've got a good mix that can, as this show moves back to the global stage on that uh, platform on Disney+, Plus with that streaming platform home, so it brings out its its best squad to build off the strengths, but push forward at the same time. Do you see what I mean? A balance. Oh yeah, you know, I, I agree. I think if we, we, we looked with Chibnall's run, we saw what happened when you basically kick out all the experienced people yeah, in the nightmare. room, and you get a load of people who haven't written a lot of telly before, who haven't got that CV to back them up, basically. And Moffat, God, his CV is massive at this point, mm. so he's. And also, he's recently shown, I can't remember what it was, it was it had Tenant in, it was a drama on BBC, because I watched it, because it was a Moffat thing. And actually, it, it reminded me about all the best qualities of Moffat, which is you can what have... What was it called? Oh, it, it was like... Did it have Tenet, um, that American Tenet, actor in it? Yes, and Tenant played like a priest. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was great as hell, <gasps> oh. yeah. Yeah, but I, well, no, but that's the thing. I would argue, actually, if you look at that, that actually for me came across as more. It wanted to concentrate on telling the story. I don't know. I didn't couldn't get I, past episode one because it, the episode one was so woke it was ridiculous. So I didn't watch the rest of it. So maybe it got better. Who knows? Uh, Crimply and Blue says, as usual, Charlotte uh, sees the light through the trees. Yeah. It makes perfect sense. No, I'm, I'm more more in line with what what you say there on that one, mm. Charlotte. Uh, not very progressive, is it? Constantly going back, says CTC. No, it, it isn't. It's but not, Doctor but... Who, Doctor Who isn't in that position. Do you see what I'm saying? Science yeah, it's, it I needs. Doctor it's Who a... has that. It hasn't got the luxury of that anymore. No, it's in a precarious position. It's, it's because not, they put it not, in that position. It, it, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they have done it to themselves. Yeah, these specials have not set the world alight as they thought they were going to. And it and needs Stephen, to be, oh, well, well, you know, was the writer. Stephen was the writer as well, Sarah, that managed to reinvent the show a decade ago yeah. with with this cast, with Matt Smith, mm -hmm. with Karen Gillan, and with uh, uh, Arthur Darwell, which did achieve that global success on Netflix. It's it did. A, it's a it's a safe pair of hands. I, I, I do understand what people are saying 
whether but you the like platform it. it's operating from is is crap it's wrong and it's morally wrong as well so it's it's not going to help if more if moffat comes on board how is it going to help with the, well, with the, 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 and, and the, the stuff that's in the show the way I, well the way i view doctor who ian is that mm. when it works and i don't know whether they're going to do this come may at all i don't know who but knows? to me doctor who is a fantasy adventure serial that is that works kind of best when it tells anthology style stories done in one a week yeah the odd two part is fine but generally one adventure then move on to another then move on to another then move move on to another so in the average season you get lots of different flavors of the same kind of series and you might get a thriller you might get a lighter episode so for me if it attempts that to that model charlotte then to me that's doctor who you know oh, yeah. and, and whatever I editorial stuff is going on in the background that it, that can be in the background it, if it doesn't bleed through or more to the point doesn't upend the week to week stuff well i'm then... just thinking more as well moffat is actually enough of a strong writer at this point he's got enough cachet he's got enough weight who, who can possibly even get russell to shut up I'll put it bluntly. Yeah. <laughs> he's one, yeah, he is. He's one of the few people who Russell he will listen to his opinion. Yes, because you know what's going to happen when when these when these newer writers come <laughs> on because of Russell's personality and his credits and all of that. If Russell says you do something, or if Russell wants something, they will they won't fight him. They just won't. I'm sorry. Whereas Moffat, I would believe he would be a possibility of a person who could actually push back, who could actually say, no, this is my story. I'm going to write this. He's the only writer that Russell T Davis has said that he didn't do extensive rewrites on during his yeah. original tenure, Charlotte. That's right, yeah, isn't it? So that, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Moffitt <laughs> might be one of the few writers who can just have actually a space without Russell sticking his oar in. Yeah, I think <laughs> this is the, the smartest decision. You know, if this happens, this is the smartest creative decision RTD's made in a long time. I do as well. It is if the doctor... Yeah. But, sorry, uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, no, because, no, because Russell has said... It's no ethos of this show, this direction. He wants to be more fantasy driven. This is exactly Moffat's wheelhouse. A lot of his stuff, it was fairy tale. It was heavily based in fantasy. It, it's something he can do really comfortably and more importantly, well. <coughs> Sorry. When he's not, and when he's, I mean, somebody put it in the, in the chat, when he does one off stories, is brilliant. Every one of those stories he did under RTD was some of his finest. The mm. problems began when he became showrunner and got carried away, like Charlotte said. No, I, I, I don't think that was the problem. I think he was a re really good writer. I think he, he made it international with, um, with Matt Smith. The thing is, he stayed too long. And when you stay too long in a job, you get kind of, you can't see the wood from the trees. So he was just writing and writing and writing. He had to get things out. So that's why uh, most of the stories towards the end were absolute rubbish, especially the last one he did for Picard. You have to remember it's too, too Moffat was though. doing Moffat was doing Sherlock at the same time he was. Yes, doing he was that, that too. Yeah. So that so, will yeah, so was pushed. stretched himself he was too thin. He was stretched. Yeah. So but, he is but, a good writer, though. He's a very good writer. Oh, he's. He's. I've always said this, and I say this with a lot of affection with Moffat. He's brilliant. He just needs somebody with a newspaper to. Behind him to go, no, nope, bad Moffat, bad Moffat. <laughs> just <laughs> but that, that's like with Sherlock. Yeah. It same thing happened with Sherlock and Doctor Yeah, it did. did. Yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah. It did. But the, but the, but as as I said, right? I think if he stretched too much, then basically he he can't find an end for a really good idea. That's his problem. Mm -hmm. But you know, again, right? If he comes in to do this, it's still for me. It's still not Doctor Who, as far as I'm concerned. So it doesn't really matter what he writes. It may be brilliant, but again. I can't be watching this because only, the whole it's the only, whole plane it's only one changed. It's only one episode. You know? I, but I won't. The whole, that's it. The whole, I can't it's the episode it. where oh, Shooty falls down a cliff. So the whole. <laughs> I'll watch it. So you you believe it. Ian? He regenerates. So, so, so yeah. you believe Ian that the game, the whole sort of, the whole field has changed on the Christmas yeah. Day episode. That's completely altered everything. Because I, mean, I thought no, that was me. relatively. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, Dan, Dan, I understand, right? For me, I can only speak for myself. I'm not speaking for anyone here or anyone out there. 
for me, Doctor Who died. The Christmas special for me really died for me. Right, talking rope and him dancing in a gay club, all of that just to me, it's gone. The whole thing's gone. So, so as I said, but good luck with this one. You know, if 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 he comes on and you, Dan, you say to me that episode was really good and none of that crap was in it. I may consider watching the episode. Do you know what I mean? But I, I can't. I can't keep going like this. I really can't. Sorry. I was going to say. Sorry to put also... it down on things, but you know. No, yeah. it's your opinion. That's no, no, name. you're allowed that. But I'm, yeah. I've seen some fans who are very like Ian. They're sort of they don't want to touch it. But as soon as they heard Moffat, mm. they were like, "I will watch that episode." Mm. So no, I I'm think not, it I'm will not, have I'm a not bit of that. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean it badly, but no, no, I, can't, no. I, I, I am like, Ian. I am that because yeah. that's yeah. exactly me. Because I said I was out. I said I was out. Yeah. I wasn't All interested right. in this new series. No, it's okay. I, yeah, you, you're it allowed to change me, your mind. It's yeah. made me sit up and go actually. That is yeah. something I would. I'm tempted to watch. But that, but that's the thing. True. For me, the bottom line is, um, you know, morally speaking, mm -hmm. for me, I, I, I really can't watch this anymore. So, um, but, but you know, as I said, they could literally bring out it. literally any any writer. They could yeah. announce that Jimmy McGovern was going to write it, or Grant Morrison, <laughs> or yeah. literally any yeah. any writer, and you just you'd just die on no. that completely. Well, well, do you know what? Right, uh, it's a, it was a mistake bringing Russell T back. Right, if Russell T can change the actual, I think it's. Ethos, I think it's. I don't think any of us can say for w one way or the other whether it was a mistake or not yet. Uh, well, it I, well, it, well, it, well, hang on, it hasn't worked out. You know, you know that nobody was more enthusiastic than me. I'd yeah. be mad to say that it hasn't so far. It hasn't worked out, out as I would have wished it to have done. Well, but we, this is it's still early days. Well, let me finish. Right. Um, if Moffat can change the ethos of Davros, then to me, he's going to change a lot of other things that I'm not going to agree with. So, and I can see, I can see where it's going. So I, I'm going to take a step back, you know, until somebody says to me, you know what, it's really good, Ian. And then I'll, I will yeah. I'll, I'll watch it again. Who knows? But yeah. So, hmm. See, uh, you, we know how much I loved Wild Blue Yonder. You know, for me, that was just. Yeah, you liked it, didn't you? Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. I loved, as soon as the pre-credits things was off you know i loved every moment of that i would come raving to you about that and you were just looking at me completely yeah. dead pants yeah, but what if, but what if <laughs> you grant and jimbo turn up in this christmas i special? will definitely be watching <laughs> Definitely, Hugh Grant. Yes, with um, Jim Perry as a cameo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well said, Sarah. Says I'm Rob Alexander. Not sure which which that that's oh. concerning. But <laughs> thank you. It'll, Rob. it'll never go this comment like that. Uh, why don't we have real Doctor Who writers like Andy Lane, Joseph Lid Lidster, Eddie Robson, Paul Mars, Gary Russell, Will Hadcroft? Uh, I uh, the timescales didn't say Will Hadcroft. That's me saying Will Hadcroft. <laughs> but uh, the list goes on. But, but the thing is, the list does go on. There's some really there's some. I won't even just say competent. I think that would be unfair, Matt. But there are writers that have proved their metal writing in other media, who could, who could should be brought through to the television series by now. They've proved themselves just the way that Rob Shearman did, the way that Mark Gatiss did. Back in 2004, Russell brought them through. Are you nervous that we ha that we don't officially know the identity of any uh, any writers really yet? And why do you think he has gone to, to people who've done a lot of Big Finish or BBC Books? It, it, it does seem silly not to take these writers who know this series, who can write this character. I, I think Russell has a set way of how he's going to actually play out this storyline that they have, you know, for the, throughout the episodes and everything. And I think he's more taking over the show uh, more than he's worried about writers, to be honest. Um, I don't think because of the – because of, it's only eight episodes, isn't it, for each mm -hmm. season. That's right. I think, I think he is keeping it really close to his chest and – you know, like like they said with uh, Moffat is the fact that he will, um, I, I think, he, honestly, he won't let Moffat do whatever he wants at all. Um, you, you know, I, I think I'm, I was hoping once they opened it up to Disney that they would actually get some more American writers in. Some world, some um, world class, some world well, class writers. Some world, well, yeah, I mean, mm. I'd love to, I'd love to write Doctor Who myself, but. I know that'll never ever happen, but what I'm saying is that since this is going to be opened up, it'll it, it'll actually become more international. But it doesn't seem to be 
be that way. It just seems to be more job for the boys. And, um, you know, or whoever, you know, um, Russell's with, in with the time. So I'm concerned and I'm a bit upset that they didn't, like, get these well-seasoned writers. Um, well, they haven't, they haven't even announced them, really, have they? Um, mm. But And that's the thing. I think that most of it, Russell is doing it himself. They just that's the reason why they haven't announced it is the fact that Russell is doing the majority of them. Maybe himself. maybe he feels to re-establish the show that he has to be extra vigilant and, and all over more of it. That that is a possibility, obviously. Uh, John Yulden's just joined in the live chat here on YouTube and says evening all sounds like a great show. Writers in Big Finish could do great stuff for the TV show. I have just completed Dark Eyes again and it's superb. Yeah, these are this is when Big Finish was still cranking out absolute yeah. gold and really evolving their uh, uh, their brand of storytelling hey what they could do in audio hey and John. bringing through new talent as well hey talent John. that has, has stood the test of time too and gone on again gone on to other things gone on to write non doctor who things completely agree when it comes to, yeah when it comes to russell t davis obviously he's a bit of a he's a bit of a funny onion i don't know what he's got up his sleeve uh, several people have asked about this in the live chat because just before we went live tonight uh, russell has been on instagram this is his social media platform of choice and he's put out this with a picture of him in the tardis console room there and it's, it's already got ten thousand likes virtually right away and the caption the caption underneath it i mean doesn't it he looks very smug <laughs> looks like he's just pinched one off somewhere and we're never going to find it so there he is, <laughs> in the TARDIS. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> it's a big set. Um, yeah, so there he is in the TARDIS. And when we go a little bit closer on the caption, it says, uh, beep, beep, incoming, beep, beep, destination tomorrow with one exclamation mark. Doctor Who on BBC iPlayer in the UK and Disney Plus where available. So what does it mean? It says, stand by. This is what's got me wondering. Stand by with two black hearts. And a cross, or is it two black hearts? No, two black hearts plus, plus. blue plus. box. Yep. So, I don't think there's any Christianity in that. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, something's being announced tomorrow, Matt, or today, if you're where you are, Matt. So, today for you, it hasn't been oh. announced yet where you are. You're the time traveler. Anything yet? Uh, yes, um, he's going to announce the, um, the actual release date for the first episode <laughs> okay so there we are so don't ask me what it is <laughs> he's gonna say he's going to say something he's going to announce something we don't know what it is and uh, some people have uh, are convinced it's something to do with the iPlayer, charlotte but i think that that's just a byline tag that he puts on yeah. all his doctor who related mm -hmm. what, what do you think well my mind did go to and i'm a bit scared i'm not gonna lie destination that's what that terrible children in need thing was. Destination Scarrow and it's comic relief night tomorrow. Yep. yep. So yeah. a bit of me it's thinking, please. Yes. Friday. Oh, Friday. No, I didn't know that. Oh, Christ. Yeah. Oh, you mean to tell me Destination Scarrow wasn't comic relief. It was something else, wasn't it? Children in need. It was oh, a charity yeah. fun. It, it was a charity fundraiser night and it was on that night. Yeah. So my brain is now going, please, God, this is another don't skit. have another skit. Oh. It's, it's, it's either, it's either a skit or it's a trailer. Remember, or, or it's a scene. You remember, we used to get them previews of scenes as well. I'm just checking yeah. the time. Are the pubs still open, everybody? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> folks, but that's the, it's the destination bit. Oh, that's what yeah, you right. that thing. No, I think you're absolutely right. You see, I was looking at the two little black hearts, and I thought, oh, two black hearts. I'm... A Time Lord with two black hearts. Could it be, yeah, him, the master? Could the master be back? Is that what it is? But now you've said that. I wish the real master would come back. I think it's going to be something. I think this is he going to be a skit. Close. I think this is going to be a skit for, for Comic Relief. It's a skit. It's going to be shit. This is going to be bad news. <laughs> this time it's tomorrow, him. Ian, we're going to be yeah. doing this again. We'll oh, God. And we'll be Charlotte's no, put no, us on no, a downer and then no, she's no, no, Charlotte, I I think, no, you're on the money with it. I'm just, yeah, when you said what the date it was tomorrow. Maybe it's David Tennant oh. looking like Ryan Gosling at the Oscars, <laughs> but in red instead of pink. <laughs> and he's going to sing, I'm just 10 or something. <laughs> let's, whatever let's see what, 
What do you think in the live chat there? What do you think's coming tomorrow as of time of recording? Obviously, this is going to age very, very quickly. Uh, nice selfie, says YW. Is it? It's a nice selfie. So, well, so he looks for, like I say, he looks very happy. He looks very smart. Also, they haven't said they're doing anything for comic relief, but the timing makes me think. It looks like he's just slipped one out. That's, that's, what, yeah, I, that's what I said earlier on. Uh, John Yulden says the master is back then. Well, that's that's what I thought. The two black hearts there. That's what I was thinking, John. But they wouldn't bring back the master in a comic relief special, would they? Would they? Mm. Would they, Tony? Would they? Well, they brought Davros back, and look how that went. So. Yeah, maybe they would. Maybe they would. Uh, February the thirtieth says uh, Peter Harrington. I don't know what he means there. I think we've got our time streams. I'm confused there. Uh, Lenny Henry will be uh, back as the alternative oh. six. <laughs> I love that. I'll be down for that. Uh, Darts hmm. Debase will be in the pub tomorrow. Uh, Heretic is 20 minutes away from the from the spoons in Dudley High Street. <laughs> <laughs> See there? Yeah, yeah, mine's, yeah, a pint and put a chase, put a chase next to it as well, please, yeah. pal. I think Charlotte just nailed it, says the time scales. Again, says Lord Thoth. <laughs> now, yes, and John uh, says kind of what you said there, Charlotte. Knowing they cocked up the minisodes, uh, this comic relief one uh, could be serious. Uh, well, yeah, they could wrong foot us and turn out mm-hmm. something decent. Complete, yeah. A Cyberman on skateboards, asks Peter Harrington. Yeah. It's a bit like monkey tennis, isn't it, that? that it's, a, it's an Alan Partridge thing, that. <laughs> That's why Shooty was wearing that outfit. He's going to be a Cyberman in this comic relief thing. It all makes sense now. <sighs> it's not good he's the new Iron Man two black hearts don't tell us his assistant is a time lady says garbage oh you think that could be something to do with Varada Sethu Uh, maybe wouldn't be surprised would you I don't think I don't think they'd reveal a new cast member on Comic Relief Night because it's got it's got that conceit of being comedy Uh, so she's not a time lord we don't think she looks like a normal companion. Yeah, so. we'll see. She we'll see. Be. She might be. <laughs> I don't know, do we? Good luck. Uh, Anyone Daleks. can be a time lord nowadays. Yeah. These days, yeah. Anyone. Daleks Even I'm a time lord. Cars, says CTC. Oh, no, no, it's, no, it's just getting, that's just getting silly. It's just getting silly. Uh, it could be worse, everybody. It definitely could be worse. But uh, tomorrow. <laughs> but tomorrow. I really need to go to the pub after that. <laughs> Tomorrow, it seems like something is going to drop. Uh, speaking of I'll going have a to the stiff pub, one, thanks. Yes, we've heard that about you. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, speaking of this guy, and speaking of the pub, uh, Doctor Who writers, uh, yes, past, present, Doctor Who showrunners from the past have shared a photo together after uh, Russell T. Davies and Stephen Moffat uh, went out uh, to support uh, Chris Chibnall. Oh. So, uh, Chris Chibnall... Chris Chibnall's new play, One Last Push, was uh, launching in Salisbury. <laughs> one Last Push. It sounds like the like pinching one off again, doesn't it? It sounds like a rough night, a rough night in the in the toilet. Um, yes. So, it, One Last Push by Chris Chibnall in Salisbury. Uh, Stephen Moffat and Russell T Davies were both there to to support him, uh, which is uh, a nice thing. I think it's a nice thing. Uh, and there they are together. So this picture was up on social media a few days ago, shared again by Russell T. Davies on Instagram. And the caption says, a marvellous night out in Salisbury to see Chris Chibnall's wonderful new play. Also, we plotted Zarby versus Garms. So they're all a bit red-faced. I think some real ale was quaffed, yeah. Sarah. What do you think? I think so. I'd... It's like the Doc 2 equivalent of Top Gear, isn't it? Just looking at these things. It's the, it's the denim as well. And the, uh, yeah, do you know, mm. they are good friends. And apparently, Chris Chibnall's really nice guy, terrible showrunner and writer, but he's a nice guy. So it's. Uh, no, it, it is nice to see him out and about. And yeah, I mean, I've seen them. before, Sarah, my postman's a lovely bloke, but I wouldn't want him to show my Doctor Who. You know? I, yeah, the- and this might. Chris has written stuff before. It could be brilliant. I mean, obviously, <laughs> he's probably nicked ideas from the Saranga conundrum for this play, um, recycling some old ideas. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I want to see this Zarbi and Garm thing, to be honest. <laughs> 
the three wise monkeys, says Peter Harrington, <laughs> Charlotte. Charlotte, I'm so sorry to show you this picture. Uh, so, yeah. so, so close to bedtime. The wise. I know, but I just all gave you that lovely idea about what could happen tomorrow. So I think it's just fair, isn't it, really? Yeah. It's just fair. So I'll Get see out. You. Yeah. See you next, <laughs> see you next see time, you Charlotte. Later. Thanks see for your Charlotte, company. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye-bye. 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 Yes, so you I do wonder what the three showrunners could have been could have been hatching some plans there, Ian. So you know, Stephen Moffat, as I say, here at Type 40 Live, we, we're telling you in no uncertain terms, Stephen Moffat is returning to the, the writing staff of Doctor Who for episodes, maybe multiple episodes of the series across multiple seasons. We can guarantee you that is going to happen. Uh, but what he's writing, whether it is that Christmas special or not, or whether that was uh, faulty information and wires crossed on that CV, we're not entirely sure. In all seriousness, I don't begrudge anybody a night at the boozer. And I do, uh, yeah, I'm just glad that Chris Chibnall's nowhere near Doctor Who anymore. So <laughs> if you feel something fine, go and see Chris's Chris's play. And uh, yeah, tell him that Type 40 Live sent you. Please, please do. Please do that too. Uh, we've had lots of comments in the live chat about this one. I think it's called People's Imaginations. Uh, you've got the destroyers <laughs> says Troy <laughs> bit of a black pill there from Troy yeah. Ian but you know everybody's entitled mm. to their opinion yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like it uh, if, uh, if several the three unwise monkeys says Matthew <laughs> Founder uh, Sarah's the only person on the planet who can remember the Sonago <laughs> conundrum's title <laughs> says Gary Akers, well, the red it, star. it got burned into my retinas, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> and one last plop, says Richard Brooks. Oh, good luck, mate. Yeah. Yeah, let's yeah, be back soon. <laughs> we'll send out the cavalry if you're missing for more than five minutes. And uh, lots of lots of love to Charlotte Shields as well. Always happy to have her have her with us. Um, they look they're having like they're having a great night. Says Y W. Yeah, and I don't begrudge anybody that. Even Chris, even Chris Chibnall. Uh, when yes, the Stephen Moffat story. I suspect this will this will gather pace, and we have to look. We're only a couple of months away from this series broadcasting, so we're going to get some sort of answer very very soon. I think the biggest clue is in the fact that uh, when they went out for the night, when they went out to the pub, there they were in their jeans, and then uh, when they went from the play to the uh, to the after party, this picture was was released. So this could this could show the mother <laughs> on board. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. He's got my top on, how dare he? Could be a clue. Oh, yeah. Could be a clue, Sarah. <laughs> Let us know what you think My in the comment section. Right now, Sarah. Stephen Moffat back on the team with all new Doctor Who under Russell T. Davies writing an episode, maybe episodes for the shooty Gatwa Doctor. That's coming soon. Allegedly the Christmas special, one Christmas special, maybe something else. We're not entirely sure. Bit of a mixed reaction here in the live chat on YouTube, Rumble and Facebook. It has to be said to the return of the former showrunner, a man who for a time, it seemed like he could do no wrong. But just like the England manager's job, uh, the showrunner of Doctor Who, yeah, it's a bit of a poison chalice, isn't it? So where are you with Stephen Moffat at the moment? Do you think that that's seven six seven years away may have may have uh, done him good and he's come back with some great ideas uh, maybe just like sarah said maybe he's the one person russell t davies will listen to we're all ears let us know let us know what you think and while we're speaking about ears head over yes head out for more of this this brand of nonsense our conversation head over to type40.podbean.com or to any major podcatcher that's where you can get the latest episodes in fact every episode of type 40 a doctor who podcast last week we dropped our interview with tony jordan from the doctor who appreciation society he spilled the beans about all their plans the revolutionary plans to change the Appreciation Society forever in time for their 50th birthday in two years' time. Very, very exciting. It could involve everyone. So yeah, go and, go and listen to that, or you can catch the uh, the video version here on the Type 40 channel. And there's our 60th anniversary episode too. My interview with Will Hadcroft there, very generous with his time as always, and even our live episode from Hooverville 2 up in Derby last September. That's there as well. More on the way. More on the way, of course. Mm. Okay, how's it looking there, Matt? Any news from Russell T. Davies yet? Has the story broken yet? No. <laughs> no. I'd just like to apologise for any, any nightmares that might happen for all these images that Dan can show And if you think that, and if you think that Ian's not impressed and he's not feeling it, yeah. 
There you, <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> it was a bit like that. It was a bit like that, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, we we want to know what you think, though. Of course, we do there in the live chat because Stephen Moffat, he's he's a big name, and maybe he's the man that you love to hate. I don't know. I don't think there are any wrong answers. And although I would say that Doctor Who should be in better health than it presently is, it is flailing rather than failing. We have reasons to still remain relatively optimistic that they could pull this back. Let us know what you think, of course, in the comment section, as always. Okay, so what next? What next, Dan? And where? Where? Let's uh, let's check in with our friend here. The only way you can help save the universe is by watching Type 40, a Doctor Who podcast. Ah, yes. Oh, uh, <laughs> yes, it's hopefully spring is going to spring any minute now, Ian. I want to see some green grass. I need to get much more fresh air and light tonight. The clocks must be going forward soon, aren't they? I think so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it gets you down, doesn't it? Seasonal anxiety disorder is definitely, definitely a thing. But I think that one thing that we do very, very well is cheering everybody up with a last look at the view screen here. Up your temporal schism for a look at, at fan art, a traditional and digital fan art and everything else in between. And if you're a fan artist or you know a fan artist and you'd like to get your work or their work up on the screen here for everybody to see at Type 40 Live, then please get in touch with us. We'd love to see, we'd love to see their work. Of course, of course we would. Well, yeah, well, we're strolling around there. Cyberpunk of the canine. He's, he's got is ears. That, I can't quite make it out. Is that a photo from the Oscars after party? Is that Elton <laughs> John's garden? Yeah, they don't have a red carpet, they have a green carpet. <laughs> <laughs> good Looking stuff. For the yellow brick road. Yeah. Mm. Oh, very good, very good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, on the last edition of Type 40 Live, we brought you that uh, review reaction show, didn't we, to Ian Levine's brand new reconstruction there of the Daleks Master Plan, Episode 1, The Nightmare Begins. Now, that was that was a hell of an evening. We'd all watched it, came in, brought you our honest takes. Ian was in the live chat too, giving us some inside information and we we dug deep, didn't we, Sarah? It's done really, really well. Lots of comments. Thank you for all that engagement. Please keep it coming. If you did miss that because it was on Monday, not our usual night, it's there. That's extra Type 40 live for them. Have you, are you uh, still uh, stoked up by this, Sarah? Because people at the fandom have been talking about it all week, haven't they? The story's not going away. Oh no no yeah no it's no it's getting more coverage all the time yeah um yeah oh yeah I very excited I, I I want this project to succeed I think it's done with love um respect for how the um how the story was how it was you know meant to be you know no tinkering around it's just just bringing it to the screen you know as much as they can yes it is limited there's limited photos. In images they can use. Yes, it's not perfect. The lip sync is still a bit off, but overall, yeah, I just think it, you know, it's a wonderful endeavor. And I just can't understand why the BBC aren't all over this show. It, you know, it's so, such an easy thing to do. And they haven't even got to do anything with it. And it's promoting their brand. It's nice to see some positivity yeah. surrounding AI as well, because it's mm -hmm. coming on in leaps and bounds, isn't it, Matt? You know, this is something that you and I have mixed feelings about, don't we, as, as professional artists, illustrators and designers? You know what? I actually called this months ago on this show that they would actually, they could actually recreate using the, at some point, they could mm -hmm. recreate using mm -hmm. those, uh, what do they call them? Snapshots? Sorry, what do they Telly call snaps. them? Telly snaps. They mm -hmm. could actually recreate it from scratch, and then all of a sudden, everybody started doing it, and I was like, they, "That that was me." Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. yeah, no. I mean, it's it's in its AI is in its infancy. I think it needs to be regulated, very mm -hmm. much so. Yeah. I think, especially, yeah, I agree with that. Especially in the art field, uh, where People are being paid a lot of money mm -hmm. to literally just type a sentence. And, you know, that's very oh. dangerous for people that have have spent 
years and years like myself and you, you Dan, um, you know, professionally, you know, to, to learn our craft. Yes, 30 and years this be, year for me. This is 30 years of my life. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, well, um, 20, 20, 25 years for me. So, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's very worrying. Um, so, yeah, but, uh, you know, it, it can be used for good. Uh, so um, this is one of those instances because it's a lot better than the animations. That's all I can say. Well, I thought that there must be other things to uh, to be enthusiastic about with AI, Ian. So I've been and looked up what's going on with in the Doctor Who universe with AI art, and this one in particular. This is uh, this is the artist creator Dark Zip. They've got an account over on Deviant Art, and uh, they've created this digital art using artificial intelligence all based around the first doctor so uh, this is what ai made of a few simple prompts to generate this new version of that original incarnation of the doctor check this out yeah it's nice wow it, it doesn't look like um um ha, ha, it didn't look like um a william hartnell but it's um it's good it's a uh, it's a good representation isn't it Looks like the doctor, doesn't it? It's, I think he's yeah. got Carlos cheekbones, though. Yeah, it's it's he's really good. A... Sorry, Sarah. It's, it look, looks a bit like an elf, like you're know, like a grand elf <laughs> in the doctor's. <laughs> uh, he is. Yeah. Looks like Orlando Bloom with white hair. <laughs> an old daughter. <laughs> it, 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 it's the stature. It's what we were talking about on Monday. How the first doctor, you know, commands himself, and uh, but yeah, the the looks right. I love the costume, the the the, okay. the way, yeah, the grey and the black, and mm -hmm. especially the the one on the left. It's really quite neat, actually. It's 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 really Doctor Who ish, isn't it? It's is. or it's Doctor Who, or it's uh, Doc Brown. There's several. That could be, yeah. It be, yeah. Back no, yes, okay, yeah. to the Future. Say, so could could be uh, Christopher Lloyd's character in the Back to the Future trilogy. Great Scott. We've got Great Scott two or three times here in the live chat. Yeah, yeah, we've got a, no, a simple nope from Richard Brooks. He's not having any of yeah. any of this. Yeah, so results are always going to vary on on this kind of stuff. Looks more Harry Potter, says Peter Harrington, but nice. Uh, YW says, oh, this is AI. Very cool. Uh, Colin, Colin Archer says, uh, just use a good face swap program. And there you are. Yeah, you can. You can do that, yeah. It's, it, it, it honestly is it's very it's very good i think these are very good obviously created by ai in the old days ai couldn't even put fingers on someone's hands but now look at that well ian can, it, you know, yeah. the old days this time last year yeah i know i know yeah, that's the old days mate <laughs> yeah. this is how fast this stuff's progressing yeah, know, it is quite scary yeah. To, uh, but, was... yeah. I, I i don't know um see so things like this uh, uh the computers actually the the, the artificial intelligence actually uses other people's art yeah. to create yeah. these things without their knowledge. So, um, you know, it's it's a little bit of a really grey area at the moment. So um, I'm on the fence for this. Mm. John Yolden <laughs> says, the first Doctor visiting Coruscant, the Star Wars movies, obviously. <laughs> Looks well, like it could it. be New York, couldn't it? Or it something like that. could be Gotham City. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe it's the tall man there yeah. from those, what are those horror movies? The um, What are they called with that floating ball? Phantasm. Phantasm, yeah. yeah. Is could that be, the tall yeah. man? Is that the tall man? Yes, yeah. so uh, I thought we'd look yeah, look at some more AI. So um, next, uh, we're looking at, at this. So uh, this is The Chimes of Midnight. So this is 2002's Big Finish classic, starring Paul McGann and India Fisher. Bit of a Christmas tradition for a lot of Doctor Who fans, this story. A very, a very rich, very evocative, beautifully, beautifully written to by is this Rob Shearman? I think it is Sarah. I think so, but people Somebody in the chat yeah. will uh will tell us. A lot of people listen to this every Christmas. I I don't. I to be honest, I think it's a touch overrated, but it is it is really, really good. And it's it's up there with it's one of the big finished stories people always mention. Well, over on X. The, now, I've got to get this right. The account called Doctor Who The Mid Journey has set about creating an animated version of The Chimes of Midnight. And uh, they've put out this picture of the Doctor's companion, Charlie Pollard, there in a scene from Chimes of Midnight. Now, I thought this... I've seen a lot of fan art of Charlie Pollard, India Fisher's character, over the years. Most of it doesn't Not look really. anything like... I think this is absolutely... That's AI generated, I think. 
because that, is yeah, it, that's yeah, yeah, it is. It, as I, I said, just looked at the hand, and the hand's got six fingers. Yeah, this, uh, yeah, this, this is AI too. As I say, it's from yeah. the the account Doctor Who and the Mid Journey on okay. X. So all of their work is uh, artificial intelligence, and and this, yeah, it this is of that nature. But this is the first AI artwork I've seen, Matt, where you could pass this as a a proper illustrated book. It, you can imagine this could have been conceived by a, a true illustrator. It conveys an element of story, I think. And it looks like Andrea Fisher. <laughs> no, I'm, tell, I'm telling you my take on it. The, this, yeah. see, for me as an artist, seeing work like this scares seeing work like this scares the life out of me as a professional yeah, artist. <laughs> very much so. Very much so. I'm on. I'm. I'm with you. Very mm. much so. It's yeah, a, I, and 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 the fact is that you know if this was a professional, um, you know, job, um. Uh, it, uh, currently, that wouldn't cut it, but I mean, it's it's nice, yeah, it's yeah. pretty. Um, you can't you can't say that, but you know, you can't say not say that. Yes. But um, yeah, you know, it's uh, I've I've always just stayed away from AI, so I don't know mm. how it completely works. I just don't no, don't I like don't it do. at all. I, I I honestly I am quite as 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 a professional artist, I'm really scared of it. Um, it, it frightens me, to be honest. Mm. Yeah. It looks so much like India Fisher, I think, Sarah. That's what surprised me. It does. It, it is. It's a, it's a brilliant image of it. Um, and, and, you know, the surroundings, you know, the, the wallpaper, the pictures, like, you know, you, you're really invoking that, you know, that Victorian... Yeah, it's evocative. System, but, yeah, but I did, I did... If you hadn't have said that that was AI, I wouldn't have... No, because I haven't got an eye for these things. I would have just assumed that was somebody's, you know. Yeah, I was. I was sent this by by somebody else, and I didn't know it was AI either. I was really, really surprised. It's a collection of bits," said Richard. "says Richard Brooks, and nah. You see, I think this could this could easily pass as hand illustrated work, in my see, in my professional that's, opinion. That's, that's the problem. See, I mean, um, recently um, Todd McFarlane had a competition and. Um, the the winner was um, a, an AI generated image, so you know there's that. <laughs> whether or not he knew that, I don't know. But you know, you have to. You, we've got to be concerned. And to me, it's 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 very concerning. But I mean, it's nice. I'm not going to say it's not. But you know, I'm, I'm um, hoping that because I think who a, made it. I think a lot of people, including me, felt the same way about digital art at all. You know, when, when software packages and, and uh, styluses, every innovation has always intimidated me a little. You know, when I first turned professional, you know, there were, you would, I think I touched a Mac twice before I turned professional. You know, they weren't as commonplace as, as they would be four or five years later. It's evolved so, so quickly. So I'd like to think that perhaps there'll be some sort of meshing of, of, of a human being and the capability of AI in this field so that it will retain its creativity. This is interesting, says YW. I love Charlotte Pollard. She's awesome. I wish some of the big Finnish companions would come to screen like Bernie's Summerfield. That's from YW. I'm still on the fence, says Mark Milford, uh, but AI should come with a watermark saying it's AI. Yes, I, I, think, like, I think this ties in with what you were saying, Matt, about regulation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, there needs to be something. Um, you know, people are paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars for 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 images that um, you know. There's not a, there's look there's hardly any work put in them. There's some work, but not not much. But then again, you know, I don't know the specifics. I think that there's a difference between what Ian Levine is doing with his work mm. uh, to oh, compare to this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In that you know they're trying to make it precise, and they're using what they what the technology that they've got um, for something that's you know would never ever happen otherwise, you know. And uh, Tony so, Farrell points this... out. Tony Farrell points out uh, six fingers and doorknobs that make no sense doesn't hold up to ex to inspection. No, but you have to really look at the details. Whereas at one point you'd see an image that was AI created, Tony. I'm sure you you've seen them, and you immediately knew it was AI. It just yeah, yeah. And in fact, yeah. we've got something just like that coming up. Uh, but with this, I think you have to you have to go. Oh, this is AI. Oh, and go, oh yeah, there. And, mm. uh, but this is getting less and less and less by the by the month, probably by the week. But yeah, I, I do. I, I, 
I really do like that. And uh, yeah, the, of course, uh, the Chimes of Midnight, you can get that on CD and I think the vinyl is still available as well. But there's, there, there's Ch- uh, Charlie Pollard as played by India Fisher. It's an example of, of how good a likeness, a likeness that is. Uh, mm. Finally, Ian, this one is just no, for no, you, no, my no, friend, no, because no, your no, prayers, no. your prayers yeah. have been answered. And uh, they have indeed from from the Time Lords, no less, uh, concerning this guy. Yes, maybe he is lying. Hugh Grant. <laughs> <laughs> I still maintain Hugh Grant one day will appear in all think, new Doctor Who. It's I hope so. Bound, it's bound to happen. It's bound to happen. But you know what our punters are like here at Type 40 Live, Ian? They're a kind bunch. And uh, they've taken pity and smiled upon you this very day. Well, this very night. So uh, we do have... Now, you've, I know that you've imagined that Q Grant would make the ultimate Doctor Who. Imagine no more. Because uh, David Payne has, has created these and imagined it for you using the wonders of AI. This is Hugh Grant as the Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Looks nothing like him. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what right so i know some people that uses ai and um they go into photoshop to correct things like you know with this you could easily get q grant's face and put put yeah. it on there and then and he'll look like you know what i mean so so but it's 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 the writing on the the the, the, the box obviously tells you it's ai because it can't understand yeah. it at all but it is quite nice it's quite nice it's, uh, that, <laughs> you know? that, that is so thoughtful david yeah, it is. yeah. <laughs> it, 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 that's like you, Gran. Um, you know, after a few bevies, <laughs> a long yeah. night, and there's more, there's more. There he is again. Look, oh, uh, well, he doesn't really look like, and the, 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 the box is something strange behind him, isn't it? AI looks like a greenhouse, there. There. yeah, it's trying yeah. to cope. Um, it looks, it looks a bit like, like him there, yeah, it looks a bit like that's Alpha Darvel in about 10 years, uh, yeah. <laughs> it looks. I think it looks enough like him. It looks enough like him to sell us that it could possibly be Hugh yeah. Grant. He's lying, says Richard Brooks. <laughs> but see, but see, what you would do, right, is you'd ask AI to to do uh, Hugh Grant as the Doctor, and then you would go in Photoshop and put the box behind him and stuff like. Do you know what I mean? To make it probably because I know a lot of people that do that, uh, especially my friend um, uh, Mark. He does that quite a lot. So yeah, it is AI does come into play. Mm. It's just like when they introduced Photoshop, isn't there? When we mm. used to do comics by hand and ink yeah, and stuff yeah. like that, and now they're doing it with with Photoshop and stuff. It's just another tool. But I I do get what Matt's saying. It is pretty scary, uh, and and it will destroy jobs as AI gets more. Prominent. Well, I mean, I, the, the software that I use um, is literally pushing me to do it every yeah. time that I yeah, open yeah. it up, you know, yeah. and I cannot switch it off for the life of me. I, but, I've you know, tried. do you know, so like um, everybody knows I'm shooting Rebecca Gold. There's one scene of Rebecca Gold where I extended the extended the set by, by using AI. So mm-hmm. um, I told AI to create a wall and a fuse box. Mm-hmm. And it did it for me, and it did it perfectly with the yeah. same light in the shot and everything. So it does come in handy when yeah. you when you want to use it. But as I said, I I, I understand what Matt's saying because it is yeah. scary. Because if it's developed to this point now, imagine what it'll be, what it will be in five years' time. And it's that's making short your dreams, time. making your dreams come yeah. true, there, Ian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Peter Harrington. Peter Harrington says it looks like Chris Marshall. It does a bit. Yeah, it does. <laughs> oh, David, we're only teasing. We love it. Don't don't think it is that. It? We're not. It is. I like. I like it. I like it. Gary like it. Akers yeah. says the universe, which I yeah. think that's the, the comment of like that's awful but brilliant at the same time. I don't know how he does it, but yeah, he shoots his scores again. Uh, Matthew yeah. Pounder, he really likes it. It looks divine. Divine. It does. Uh, I'd watch it. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I definitely watch it if if Hugh Grant only if it's just for one night. Hugh Grant plays the Doctor. I would be all over it. Maybe this is what this announcement is tomorrow. About. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. Card, it looks like a greenhouse. It does, doesn't it? it does, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think people. Obviously, this yeah. is uh, Hugh Grant, the uh, the actor. The uh, he's about sixty years old, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, we are convinced that he will eventually be in Doctor Who proper. But before people correct us, yes, yes, we know he has sort of played the Doctor. In the Curse yes, of Fable, yes, there's yeah. 25, 25 years ago uh, on yeah. Comic Relief Night, funnily enough. So 25 years ago, my word. Wow. I don't this know week, wasn't it, Dan? Tomorrow. 
Well, it probably would have been. I mean, they do move Comic Relief Night around. So, um, mm. yeah, so when Charlotte said it was tomorrow, obviously I don't pay any attention to anything the BBC do. I haven't got a TV licence. I wouldn't watch Comic Relief in a pink fit now. But I think the one in 1999 was probably the last proper good one that was actually funny. And The Curse of Fatal Death was a major highlight of that. that obviously but do you know, do you know Joanne and Lumley made the perfect Doctor, didn't she? When she turned up, as the doctor Bollocks! that's when Sorry. i could no but that's you know what that's when i could say yeah a woman could play the doctor. well the thing it is she was actually me. feminine do you not do you not think so dan no. it never worked for me the doctors are oh, really man. even, in, even yeah in i know i know i agree with you totally i'm just saying if if the I doctor agree, had to be a woman like, then join the lumley at that moment in time feminine. at that well, moment I'm, in time she would have made she would have i'm gonna say i enjoy i kind of enjoyed this enough at the time i took yeah, it for what so it was yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, not yeah. something i go to go back to very often yeah. it's it's just a bit of uh bit it of, was there for the fluffing. sonic screwdriver gag that yeah. Was it. yeah i know a lot yeah. of people really like it and quote it all the time but i, Who I played think the master again jonathan price yeah he was really good yeah he was hot at the time too like not, I yeah. mean, I don't mean hot, hot, but I mean like not a as star. hot as Julia Sawala. My God, she she oh, was and is still gorgeous. Oh always, always loved her. It's got three press settings. Gang. That's Peter Harrington. Don't know what he's talking about there. Do you remember the uh, press yeah. gang? She was in <laughs> yes, a... yeah, I do. press gang. One of my favourite shows. Mm, uh, yeah. The Curse of Death. I was always jealous of that American. Made guy me feel really confused American. when watching it. Not to mention uncomfortable for whatever reason. Says YW. Mm. I, uh, I've no idea what you mean. But uh, yeah, sorry for bringing bringing that back to you. Uh, <laughs> yes, Comic Relief Night tomorrow night. Heaven knows what they're gonna <laughs> what they're gonna bring before us. Ah, oh, Sarah. Sarah, cheer me up. I know how we can cheer <laughs> ourselves up by remembering just a few weeks ago. Do you remember, Sarah, we all got together to talk about the robots of death and it was glorious. It was. Great oh, stuff. yeah. Great stuff. So much fun. We finally, finally delivered the number one most requ requested classic series of Doctor Who review. We did that for you a few weeks ago here on the channel. And yes, in the not too distant future, we are going to be covering the number one most requested new series episode. We're going to keep the uh, the name of that episode to ourselves for the time being. But yeah, keep an eye on the channel for the first word on all of that, as well as the other treats that we've got that we've got lined up. Which episode of the new series do you think we're going to be reviewing? Let us know. Take your best guess there in the in the comments section. Ah, but that's that's another I'll, I'll one. I'll give you a clue. It's Stop. not the Taranga conundrum going. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. Yes, and as always, if you're a fan artist or know a fan artist, whether they work in AI or standard digital art or a traditional art or uh, crafting, if they if they stitch together little Cybermen and Daleks out of in macrame, all that kind of thing, or maybe they knit a great big chunky pulley in the colours of the Fourth Doctor's scarf. We'd love to see all that too. Send us the pics, and we'll get it up on the view screen for everybody here too, and and lavish it with praise and adoration. Ian, that tends to be that tends to be how it works. And people are taking guesses in the live chat. No, no, drop us a comment with, with that, and we'll we'll let you know whether you're warm. Or, or cold, or you can get in touch with us through our social media, Instagram and X at Type Forty Doctor Who, of course, with with answers to all of the questions that we've brought before you, and those those two news items too. Yeah, shoot, uh, shooty Gatwa at the Oscars. Yeah, dressed as a urinal, unbelievable. <laughs> we've got Millie Gibson, absolutely fired from her job as a full time companion on the show. And we've got Stephen Moffat returning to the series. Expect that to be confirmed sooner rather than later too for further discussion oh, of all of those things and everything classic series, new series and all new. Head over to the Type 40 Facebook group too. That's where you'll find doctors and companions. Sarah's boyfriend. Which one? <laughs> all of them. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sarah... Just want video evidence. Play this podcast. What app have you got? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. This is the best Play conversation I've been involved in. I'll tell you what, I'm going to send that to myself. Yeah. Right? So I know it's you. I'll well, see us all on there. Okay. You might change your mind if you see it. Don't say that, Sarah. <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yes, more next week. Same time and space. Hot takes, cold shoulders, pet peeves, bouquets, or pot shots. Ian, on the next Type 40 Live. Thank you for your company again, mate. Good to have you back. Mm, it's good to be back. Oh, yeah, we missed it, Ian. <laughs> have you been gone? I know. Hurt. Oh, <laughs> Pot, real life time traveler already friday for you no word yet on what russell t davis has planned for us no i just checked. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just checked skip forward another few hours yeah give, give it another yank mate give it another yank <laughs> tonight tonight <laughs> i don't need to know that la, 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 la. thanks for getting up for us matt we do appreciate it I hope you have Always. a brilliant weekend weekend sarah <laughs> Yes, another one, another one done. That's uh, that's two, oh, two this week for people to go back and endure all. I mean, enjoy all over Ooh. again. A, a great week, a great week on Type Forty. I, I think here with us, but yes, uh, thank you for this one as well. God, the comments are still coming in. Heavens above, yeah. But let us know what you think of all those topics. We're we're all ears. Uh, what next? Who knows, Sarah? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Oh, we, we've just had a, a comment from Mark Milford saying, will yeah. Type 40 do a broadcast after comic relief? Will Type 40 do? It depends what they do to us, Mark. <laughs> so, I mean, we are, we, we if have it's to another make... Debra's gate, then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say no, but anything, anything's possible. It depends if we're in a state, if we're in a state of shock or or not? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just depends on because we have, we have done two this week and we still. Have to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there's a limit to everybody's time and space, but we yeah. do always have the time if you have the space here at Type Forty Live. We will catch you soon. Let's keep our fingers crossed. It's nothing too unpleasant for Comic Relief Night because yeah, you may well see us back, but <laughs> whenever. And if there is, whenever. we're blaming Charlotte. <coughs> <Trump>. <laughs> 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 Thank <laughs> you.